Ross Lee and Derry Conley, and we're here, and we'll be bringing you live and in un, in un, interrupted even uh, coverage of Innes Gillen Gales and Erin Gales. That's our live feed, and also we have correspondents at Newton Butler versus Maguire's Bridge, Adam C versus Co, Temple versus Listen Ski, Irvingstown versus Brookborough, and Belcou against Timor. And now we will pause for our anthem, which will be sung by Aoife Catcart. there of our own Naveen from Aoife Cackard and we're ready for the action here we'll get a quick look at the teams if at all possible um, lining out for uh, in a skill and gales is Keen Newman and Gold, Johnny Casty, his brother then Paddy at full or his twin brother Paddy and then James Ferguson half back line of Aaron Nolan, Josh Horn and Kieran Smith Richu O'Callaghan and Brandon Horn in the middle of the field. Connor Watson, Connor McShea, and Colin Quinn. And the half forward line: Eaton Beresford, Connor Love, and Neil McDermott uh, in the full forward line. And then Aaron Gales. They will go as follows: with Brian Ryder in goals, Colm Keown, Paul Ward, and Jack McCann. Alton Callum, Brian Mullen, and Oshin Callum. Then the middle of the field: Michael Ogue, McGarrigal, Gregory McLone. The uh, half forward line of Martin Gilfeather, Ryan Lyons, and Aegon Callum, Tommy McCaffrey, Dan McCann, and Barry McCann. Three McCann brothers, three Callum brothers. If there's any changes, we will identify them as soon as possible. But those are the starting teams that we have been informed of. And our referee tonight, who is mic'd up, by the way, and we'll hear uh, his interventions throughout the evening, that is Jared McLaughlin. A really interesting game to look forward to, Mark. Yeah, very interesting game, and the, the, the first really interesting matchup. I'm just looking out there Jet uh, Johnny Cassidy has moved onto the half forward line for Enniskill and Gales to pick up Alton Kelm uh, with Connor Watson dropping back to the half back line so that, that's certainly one to look forward to it certainly is and Enniskill and Gales come forward looking for the first score of the game the ball dropped there by Eaton Beresford but still in the hands there of Connor McShea got the shot in surely a goal Lauren no it's gone to the right and gone wide there's a deflection on it uh, the umpire indicates that there's a deflection so Connor McShea's shot he had two attempts and eventually must have been the goalkeeper defender yeah, mark got a hand I on it. I think it might have been a defender got a hand on it. Um, I don't think it was the keeper. Um, Connor would probably be disappointed when he got the second bite at the cherry that he didn't nail it. Yeah, an excellent opportunity there from Connor McShea, but a bright and enterprising start from Inneskillen. And I suppose it's simple here tonight for Inneskillen Gales. They have to win to guarantee, possibly a draw might do them, but they have to win to get to the league final. That ball is kicked in from the 45 by Connor Watson. It doesn't reach its intended target of going over the po over the bar, but it comes to Richie O'Callaghan in possession there. The midfielder up helping in the forward line. He looks as if he's going to be turned over. He has been turned over and coming out with the ball is Jack McCann. McCann feeds it forward to his brother. His brother is Dan over the far side line. The referee, Jeremy McLaughlin, indicates that that's a free to the Aaron Gales men and the ball is picked up by Brian Mullen. Normally you see Brian operating uh, in the midfield area but tonight he's at centre half back. Strong powerful run by Brian Mullen. Looks for support. Has it there from Callum. Egan. Egan picks it up there. Goes to ground. Referee awards the free and Ryan Lyons wants to take it quickly. Takes it with the outside of his left foot. Threads it in there towards Tommy McCaffrey. McCaffrey twists and turns. Gets a shot away but it's gone to the right hand side and gone wide. First wide of the evening from Aaron Gales but uh, Fast, sharp, oh, moving. A very, a very lively start to the game. Um, Jet, great ball in there from Ryan Lyons into Tommy McCaffrey, and that's something they look to do all evening. 
Ball kicked out there in the middle of the field. The ball breaks. One change, we believe, on the Inniskillen side means that James Ferguson drops out and he is replaced by number 24, Ryan McDonald. So that's a bit of a blow to an Inniskillen Gale side that are already without the two reels, Paddy and John, and of course Owen Beacon missing tonight as well. So too, I suppose, Callum Jones, who hasn't played any football this year at all due to so shoulder problems. So the four key players missing there and then a skill and gale side but then of course Shane Rooney missing from the Balik men as the ball is in the hands there of Paul Ward gets it over to Ashing Callum Callum 65 metres out from his own goals coming forward with a strong purposeful run gives it to the brother the brother is Alton Alton gives the ball forward heavy hit there late challenge the referee awards the free and Alton Callum has come off the worst of that challenge Mark yeah yeah running to Connell Quinn there um, when, when Alton took possession of the ball and, and started on his run the, the, the Gales defence converged on him and, and uh, legally turned him over um, and Alton's actually down here now he certainly he, is receiving he, he's some taking a right hit yeah, he certainly has uh, to into the ribs possibly you maybe keep an eye on that I'll follow the ball here uh, for the moment as the ball is in the hands there of the centre half for Conor McShea floats one in and it goes to the right hand side and goes wide it'll be interesting to see if our referee holds the game up maybe for some attention to there you see Alton lying prostrate yeah. on the ground doesn't look in great shape no, it has to be no. said no, definitely not. There was some talk before the game that he was carrying uh, an injury uh, into the game. Somebody suggested a groin injury, but this looks uh, upper body. Aye, this looks to be as a result of the impact on, on the, the collision with Connell Quinn there. Um, yeah, so the, he's been attended to and he's sitting up now, so um, hopefully Alton's okay because, as I said at the very beginning, I'm just really looking forward to seeing that battle between Alton and his county colleague, uh, Johnny Cassidy, unfold. Um, two players with, with great pace, great penetration, so that's uh, one to look forward to oh as well. Yeah, it should be a great battle. Yeah. Two wonderful players. I mean, Johnny Cassidy, uh, to me, a standout player for uh, the Fermanagh team last year, grew and grew and grew and was terrific in the Tolchin Cup games and up against Alton, of course, who lit up the Tolchin Cup as well. Absolutely. No, look, they're two top-class uh, inter-county players and... Look, they're blessed with that athleticism and physicality you need for inter-county football now as well. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I just feed, I want to feed some information through to uh, our producer, Phil Flanagan in here. Um, so, I uh, will follow the, the, the play as uh, Innes Gillen come forward with it. Ball threaded inside, looking for Connor Love in the sunshine. Takes it really well. That's one of his traits. Brilliant hands, still going for it. Turns on the favourite left foot. That's a super score from Connor Love. You know, if it was the one thing that I really admired about Connor Love in that Hogan Cup run was his handling. His handling was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, no, look, again, it was a great ball in from Brandon. And I suppose Brandon has been kicking those balls into Connor Love for yeah. years. Um, Connor did really well. He maybe had the option of a mark, but he had no notion of taking a mark yet. He wanted to take his man on. And and, and did so and scored a brilliant point. Yeah, great score, opening score. The game goes the way of Connor Love. This game be played in ideal conditions here in Brewster Park. Sunshine uh, on a Friday evening. This Friday evening finale on Fermanagh GA TV. The ball is fed in. Surely a goal chance here. It's McShea again. That's his uh, third chance at the goal. And this time the goalkeeper, Brian Ryder, makes a wonderful save. But there's question marks about this. Aaron Gale's full back line. They've been cut open three times, Mark. Look, that's, that's two goal chances that that Connor McShea himself has had. And look, Connor did very well to lose the defender there, um, but Ryder was out very, very sharp to, to, to smother the shot. Well, it's been a brilliant start to this game as Jack McCann comes out, gives it to his county colleague, that's Ryan Lyons. Lyons feeds it off there to Martin Gilfeather. Gilfeather, 65 metres out from goal. Feeds the ball forward to Egon Callum. Back to the older brother, that's Oshin. Oshin Callum playing really good football at the moment. Callum shows his pace, cuts inside, goes into, well, into a cul-de-sac and a little bit of a breakdown in communication with himself and Tommy McCaffrey. And hence the Gales break it up and come out with Josh Horn. Yeah, look, just to misread the intention of his, his, his uh, corner forward colleague there. Um, just watching there as the, as the Gales build. Um, despite attacking in numbers, Ern Gales are very careful to leave one or two spare defenders at the back as well, Jet, so they don't get caught out. And as we see here already, that the Gales have been slowed down in their attack. Yeah, Brandon Horn feeding the ball in there over the far corner. An opportunity for Ennis Gillen Gales to register another score, and that's from the, other, the corner forward. Neil McDermott, McDermott. fine score. Brilliant score. And look, another beautifully flighted kick pass inside by Brandon Horn as well. And it's lovely to see the quality of that kicking. Uh, meeting the inside line and, and two corner forwards 
Love and McDermott have, have scored great, great points there. Seven minutes played and just a quick update is that Ross Lay lead uh, Derry Gonley Harps by a point and it's now four points, four points to no score. Ross Lay lead Derry Gonley, so a bit of a surprise there. Timor and Belcou are a point apiece. So all having different impacts. Ross Lay need to win and hope results go their way. Maguire's Bridge uh, have a point and Newton Butler have two points. So uh, the scenarios are, are, are quite complicated and a lot of these uh, uh, Division 1 and Division 2 games mark. But at the end of the day, Ross Lay need a win and they hope then that Devonish and Dona both get beat. But they've started really, really yeah, well. they've started really, really well. Um, and funny, of the three teams in danger of relegation, I thought maybe Ross Lay had the toughest task this evening. Barry McCann um, fires the ball on the car over the shoulder and Barry McCann fires the ball over the bar. A great score from Barry McCann. It's two points to one. Yeah, super score by Barry there on the turn off his right foot. Um, but as I was saying, there, I thought maybe Ross Lay would have had a, the most difficult uh, evening. And look, that could still turn out to be the case. And no doubt things will chop and change over the course of this evening. Oh, uh, yeah. There's yeah there's really, no doubt about really it. exciting yeah. evening here on Modern Brothers from Managing GA TV as we watch Johnny Casty coming striding forward. Casty lays it off one more time there to Colin Quinn over the far side of the field. And it's Gillen Gill still in possession with Connor Love. Back it goes to Quinn. Fires in the shot. That's a fine effort, but again, it's just gone to the yeah. left hand side and Un gone wide. Unfortunate for Connell Quinn, but. Um, that was a really sharp move by the Gales and Connor Love uh, laid that off. Connor looks very, very sharp in the early stages of this game this evening. And the skill and look very focused. They Mark. do, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about it. They're very, very they're very, very tuned into this one. Pressing the kick out here very ferociously as well. Yeah, they need the win, of course. They, if they win or draw, I think that guarantees them a place in the league final against Aaron Gales. However, if they lose, Canali could be the team that will benefit from that ball. is won brilliantly by Tommy McCaffrey. Has support there from Brian Mullen, but McCaffrey still keeps going. Still McCaffrey, what a brilliant run by McCaffrey. He's taken down by McDonald, and the referee indicates the free, but Tommy McCaffrey looked really sharp there. Yeah, look, Tommy, Tommy is capable of that. Um, again, it was a, a, a super kick pass in. Bouncing just in front of him, uh, Tommy turned on a sixpence and took his man on, and it for, it really looked as if the goal was on there if they hadn't taken Tommy down. Um, probably the right decision by the Enniskill in defence, um, but that's a couple of times now that I've looked over there and Enniskill have been left two on two. Mm. Um, not a good idea with Tommy McCaffrey in there. Well, that ball has been popped over the bar by young Aegon Callan, the youngest of the three Callan brothers, and he's a brilliant prospect as well as Aegon yeah. Callan. Um, a strong lad as well and I suppose maybe because Ryan Lyons is playing at centre half forward for, for, for Balik Jet maybe Josh Horn can't drop off just and protect his full back line because he has to keep an eye on Ryan Lyons as well well that's another battle I'd love to focus in on but there's an awful lot to focus in on tonight we'll follow this play and we'll give you more updates in a moment Connor Watson f takes possession into the sunshine into Connor Love he started so brightly so too is Connor McShea ball fed inside now to Connor Watson a lot of Connors gives it over to Neil McDermott he has one point to his name 45 metres out gives it back to Brandon and for Horn. Horn looks up, surveys his options. One of his options there is Johnny Casty. Casty, 45 metres out now. Aaron Gales get every bar, two players behind the ball. Ball threaded inside now to Rich O'Call. Well picked up. There's a brilliant move by into Kieran Smith. Smith the back inside to Beresford. Beresford the shot. Beresford into the back of the net. Brilliant goal for Mina Skillen. They were patient throughout. Fed it through the hands, and Richie O'Callan fed it back to Eaton Beresford, and Beresford buries it into the back of that crucial goal for Innes Gillen Gales. They lead 1-2 to 2 points. Yeah, that jet was a brilliantly crafted goal. Um, Richie O'Callaghan drifted in inside, waited, 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 timed his run to perfection, and just laid the ball off to the runner. Um, that, was, that was a super, super goal, and, and the intelligence and the experience of Richie O'Callaghan very much to the fore there. Yeah, and the patience because they won the ball in the 20 metre line and then fed it the whole way back out and started the move again. Eventually it came to Richie O'Callaghan, back to Parson, and he buried it into the back of the net, just talking of goals. Devonish have after hitting a goal down in Garrison against Balalek. They need a victory tonight and hope that Ederney beats St. Pats. They're leading now 1-1 to two points against Balalek. Good start for my uh, hometown club on a big evening for them because they have been playing Division 1 football for 40 years 
years. They didn't want to leave Division 1, but tonight could be the night of their demise, but time will tell. They've started well. They lead a goal and one, two, two points down on Loch Melvin's rocky shores this evening as Ryan Lyons gathers the ball, comes out. But we have people watching this game all over the world. I know Niall Cox and his wife Patrice are out in New York. Niall, a Devonish man, Patrice and Aaron Gales lady. That'll be an interesting house uh, this evening. So too, Gaby Ferguson out in Santa Ponza, one of Aaron Gales' biggest supporters. I hope, Gaby, you're enjoying this. Well, you'll probably not enjoy that goal that in a skill are after scoring, but this is a very good game of football, Mark Henry, and we're enjoying it here on Fermanagh GA TV. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a good game of football, and it's two quality sides yet as well. There's a lot of quality in this, and there's a, there's a, a degree of intensity in it. Both of these teams are intent on winning this game and, and, and we're in for a treat for the rest of the evening. We certainly are. Colm Keown is in possession of the football. Gives it back there to Brian Mullen. Mullen. 40, 65 metres out from his own goal. Gives it to Colm Keown. Keown looks up, gives it back to Mullen. Mullen now has a bit of space to operate in and he has good pace. Lays it off now to Alton Callum. Callum drops this one short, but the defender needs to be careful and the defender there was Aaron Nolan and just about was careful enough because he got his hands on it and tapped it back to his goalkeeper who is Keane Newman and Innes Gillen come again looking for another score. They lead 1-2 to 2 points. Ball over the far side of the field to the goal scorer, the goal scorer being Ethan Beresford. Beresford collects it, gives it left footed out into the middle of the field, picked up there by Richie O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan studies his options, gives a good ball inside to Connor Love. He has been brilliant. He has turned even before he had that ball in his hands. Brilliant by that looks like a free, looks like a foot trip there yeah. on uh, Jared McLaughlin. Didn't pick up that one. It was allowed play to go on. Your thoughts on that, Mark? Yeah, I look, thought maybe Connor Connor should have got a free for that one, but he, he did brilliantly. As you said, he took the ball actually on the turn and was away. Fantastic. Was away um, and look, it looked as if he had goal in his mind at that stage as well. Again, just looking as, as Ern Gales developed this play, Kieran Smith is now much more prominent as a sweeper for the Enniskill inside, um, trying to cut out that ball that went into Tommy McCaffrey um, and into the other inside forward and it's making it more difficult for Arngales. There goes Holton Callum, brilliant run from Callum, taking on uh, Casty at this stage. Great battle again, but this time Callum has fouled and the free will go the way of uh, Inniskillen. And, well, Aaron Gales look quite open defensively, I have to say, and um, Paul Ward is having a torrid evening on Connor Love, so maybe that's an adjustment. Well, I just see Jack McCann now slotting back in as uh, we get another update. Tempo, well, it's just gone off the, the screen there, but uh, we'll see what that one was in a moment. We'll Timor lead Belcou, two points to one, as you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen. Belcu need to win that game and hope all the results go their way as Ryan Lyons carries the ball. Great ball in towards Tommy McCaffrey. What a super ball. Can he finish? The answer is yes. That's a wonderful goal. All made by the pass from Ryan Lyons into Tommy McCaffrey. We have a cracking game on board here on Fermanagh GATV and it's just because the quality is so good. I'll Mark. tell you what, Jet. The quality of that pass. Uh, Ryan Lyons wasn't content with giving a decent pass. He put it on a sixpence, and there was a slight delay before he kicked it to line it up exactly where Tommy McCaffrey would want it. Ryan Lyons could see the goal coming if he got it in the right place, um, and Tommy did the rest. It was a super goal. We've had two absolutely brilliant goals, two different types of goals, but two brilliant goals, Absolute Mark. Absolute quality from, from quality players. Um, and again, it's not as if it's a, a, a game with lack of intensity and, and no mark. And these, these, these passes are required to get the bits of space because the marking is tight. And here comes uh, Balik again with Alton Callum. Super goal, one goal and two apiece. This has been a brilliant opening 15 minutes here. Wherever you are in the world, we hope you're enjoying it. Alton Callum feeds the ball inside to the goal scorer, McCaffrey. McCaffrey is turned over and then the Skillen are able to come out with possession of the football through Connor Watson. Back deep in his own defence faced up there by Aegon Callan but Watson elects to go back and gives it back to the experienced Richie O'Callan O'Callan looks up and gives it over to his right hand side to Neil McDermott, McDermott studies what his options are, one of them is Conor McShea he uses that option, McShea feeds it on one more time crossfield ball, good ball towards Brandon Horn or, well Brandon Horn was screaming for it probably was the ball but Conor Love has been fed gives it back to Horn, Horn will try to get it in the left foot, didn't fancy the shot but lays it off there to McDermott who does but it's gone to the left yeah. hand side and gone wide Look even despite that, that goal from Tommy McCaffrey as, as Ennis Gill and Gales were attacking there they left themselves wide open if there had been a breakdown um, 
yet. They left themselves three on three at the back. I think they really are going to have to be careful and leave someone back all the time in front of Tommy McCaffrey. Yeah. Well, here comes Oshin Callum. We've played, let's look at the watch, 16, 17 minutes in this opening half. Ball in the hands now of Greg McLone. McLone lays it off to his midfield partner, Big Michael O. McGarrigal. McGarrigal feeds a good ball into McCaffrey. Brilliant take from McCaffrey again. Him and Connor Love are playing outstanding football in both respective forward lines as Egan Callum feeds the ball across. Just about to retain possession. Back it goes to Ryan Lyons. He'll get onto the trusty left foot. Does he fancy it from distance? He does. Has he the distance? Has he the accuracy? He has the distance but he has, certainly hasn't got the accuracy. It's gone to the left-hand side and gone wide. Three wides to Niskill and two to Aaron Gales. Sides locked level, one, two apiece. Quality game of football. Quality game, but uh, look, to be fair, I would say both Tommy McCaffrey and, and Connor Love are pleasantly surprised by the amount of space they're getting inside and, and, and the quality of the ball they're getting. They wouldn't be used to that with some of the packed defences we're used to seeing. Yeah. Um, and, and both teams, I think, need to take step to try and, and, and quell the influence of those two particular players. Well, I hope they don't because I this see is him. enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it open as the ball is in the hands of the goal scorer. Eaton Beresford, Beresford 45 metres out, has support there in the form of Josh Horn, playing outstanding football at the moment, good ball inside, better defensive play on that occasion by Colm Keown, but the ball breaks favourably for Conor Love, intelligently fades it out to Horn. does he fancy it? He does, has he enough corner in it? He hasn't, it's gone to the left hand side and gone wide, but Josh Horn playing exceptional football yeah. I believe for in the skill over yeah, the last no, look, month or six weeks. And, and, and the number six position suits him down to the ground, yeah. He, he, for a young fella, he reads the game incredibly well. Um, as we spoke off air before the game began, he, 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 he moves forward. His first intention is to move forward and he can give quality ball too. Speaking of quality ball, this man gives the pass of the game. That was Ryan Lyons. He tries to give another one and he got a brilliant ball from Lyons. But this occasion, Tommy McCaffrey took his eye off the ball just for a split second and wasn't able to get it first time. And that allowed Dennis Gill and Gale's uh, defence an opportunity to close him down. Yeah, I think it was just Barry McCann in that, uh, in that instance was inside and again, just didn't quit take it cleanly which gave the defender gave Ryan McDonnell the opportunity to get a hand in and get it turned over yeah it was indeed Barry McCann the man that uh, didn't handle that ball as out the field come in a skilling in the ship of Brandon Horn solos with the left gives it to his younger brother his younger brother is Josh Josh feeds the ball over the far side of the field in a skilling Gales in possession of the football the sides lock level here at one two apiece we haven't had a score for all of four and a half minutes which is a surprise in this game as Richie O'Callaghan gathers possession takes on his man his man is Greg McLone does well tugging the jersey referee awards the free into the skill and gales but i um, would think it's probably too far out for uh, an attempt at the post as we get uh, an update Derry lynn and canali big game this and the score line is Derry lynn three points canali three points the last one of those coming from Aaron Turney and matter of fact it was three points to one but two points in the last four minutes means that it's three points apiece Canale <coughs> need to win that game and they need the hope that Aaron Gales beat Balik if those two things happen then there's an opportunity for, or there will be uh, a final that will include Canale as that ball has been fired in six points to four is a text coming through from uh, John McGovern, I take it that's in favour of uh, De of Rosley. One three to five in favour of Devonish. Six to five at the moment. And Adam C. Co. Ten. Adam C. Twelve. Not sure if that's the right score, but scores coming up. Listen, Ski leading by two points to one. If they win tonight and results go their way, then they have an opportunity. One three to two in favour. Well, we'll follow the play here with Alton Callum. Callum through on goal. Still Callum. Can he finish? Oh, the goalkeeper. Surely it's in the back of the net. Bar. It is in the back of the net. Was he standing in the square? That is the question. Well, the referee needs him. He needs him. He needs him. The players were questioning, but there you have what the referee has said. He was closest to it. He said he moved yeah. in. So describe the goal for us, uh, uh, Mark. Look, that's the first time tonight that that Alton Kellum has got goal side of, of Johnny Cassidy. Um, he had made two or three runs previously in the game, but got bottled out of it by Johnny and a combination of, of other uh, and a skill and defenders. But he got goal side, he was well seen, ball over the top, and of course there was no catching him when he got away yet. Um, first first effort was, was, was smothered, 
uh, lucky enough then uh, Barry McCann was close by to, to finish off the second one yeah and to be fair the defender and the goalkeeper done really well because the defender moved over to assist he knew that Alton was going to go for the shot and he assisted yeah. his goalkeeper and blocked it and to be fair it spun favourably for it, for Aaron Gales but here he, fortune favours the brave well look that's it but it just shows you what, what uh, the, the, the threat that, that, that Alton Kellen poses if he gets away well are the last three scores in this game Mark have all been goals uh, Eaton Beresford, Tommy McCaffrey and Barry McCann some, some entertainment yeah some entertainment and look you, you know one of the reasons we're having so many goal chances is, is the, the, the sheer pace of some of these players like Connor loves pace Connor McShea is very very quick Tommy McCaffrey's flying and of course Alton Kelm and Johnny Cassidy and that ball has been popped over the bar from uh, free and it's a score for in a skill and gales, a much needed score. Yeah, good from response. Good Connor response. Watson. Yeah, Connor. Yeah. Just a timely response just to take the sting out of the thing um, on the back of that goal they conceded. Well, his grandfather was here earlier on, as usual, welcoming us all into Brewster Park and into the press box in particular. What a great man Peter Watson is. He's been uh, a feature of the press box in Brewster Park for as long as I can remember, and that's a fair length as uh, Tommy McCaffrey gathers possession of the football, playing really, really well this evening as Tommy McCaffrey still in possession. McCaffrey now being closed down by Paddy Real. Ball fed back out there now to Brian Mullen. Mullen gives it back now one more time into the hands of Greg McLone. McLone to Ryan Lyons. He's the orchestrator. Comes across field. Looking for a little bit of space. Looks for Callum on the, off the shoulder. Still sold on the ball. Will probably look for Callum again. Goes to ground. Referee doesn't buy that one. Stays good defensive play, but in goes Ryan Lyons again. Well, good defensive play, yeah. it has to be said. You no, know, a very diligent defensive play from Neil McDermott. Uh, didn't dispossess him the first time, went at him a second time, um, and, and fairly dispossessed him. No for you, no for you. Take back a yard now. You have our referee uh, informing us all of why he made that decision. There was no free previous to it. This time there is a free. Again, it'll go the way of Inniskill and Gales. They've reduced the gap to uh, two points, uh, two two to one three. Here on Modern Brothers from Anna GA TV. Ball in the hands there of Josh Horn. Horn coming through. Still Horn. Does he fancy this one? Horn lays it off inside. Not the best ball in the world, it has to be said. Good, strong, robust play by Colm Keown. Ball eventually bra breaks into Brian Ryder, but the, the shot was on for, for yeah, Josh yeah. Horn. Josh maybe should have taken a, a shot just a step or two sooner. Um, and when he did go to make the, 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 the pass to Aaron Nolan, um, look, the thing had closed down a fair bit. Um, we, we've talked about a number of... of battles out here this evening uh, Jet, we haven't mentioned the the Brian Mullen Connor McShea mm -hmm. it's shaping up to be a good battle as well Brian Mullen having an influence for his team but Connor playing very well for Inniskillen as well yeah the, the Inniskillen Gales uh, half forward line Connor Watson Connor McShea and Connor Quinn to maybe a lesser extent uh, getting on an awful lot of ball and working really hard too and getting back to help out as Eaton Bar Beresford and Neil, Neil McDermott Devonish lead 1-3 to 5 as the score comes in from, from Garrison uh, the score line here reads 8 to 6 in favour of Aaron Gales, but it's in a skill in Gales whose need is more. Uh, they need to win this game uh, to guarantee their place in the championship or in the league final. Uh, speaking of the championship, before we come off air tonight, we'll have a fair idea of the groupings as well for the championship. It could be a long evening here, Mark, but I'm sure we'll cope with it as the ball is in the hands of Hoshin Callum. Callum gives it to his brother. His brother on this occasion is Alton. Alton coming across the field, looking for support. There's the three Callums in a row. Back it goes for a fourth pass to another Callum. The Callums are playing their own game of football here in Brewster Park. Remember, in a skill and gales tonight, missing the two real brothers Paddy and John so too Owen Beacom and Callum Jones as Tommy McCaffrey does well again still Tommy McCaffrey lays it back out to Aegon Callum Aegon will probably fancy this Aegon will fancy it and he pops it over the bar he's got one from a free he's got one from play he's only maybe 20 years of age Aegon Callum if, if even that and he's a fine prospect as well he is yeah and look the, the, the bounce favoured Tommy McCaffrey there um, bounced over the defender um, Tommy was shaping the head for a goal again uh, was closed off by the Gales defence and had the, the wherewithal to turn around, find Aegon, and he, he very calmly struck the point over. Yeah, fine score from Aegon 
Callum, he is certainly a talented footballer. And speaking of talented footballers, what a catch in the middle of the field there by Michael Oog McGarrigan, a big powerhouse of a player. Oh, yeah, a big, strong lad. Michael Oog was in St. Michael's for a couple of years and was very unfortunate to break his leg when he was with us. That's right, um, but that. a fabulous, fabulous player. And he's obviously got back into really good shape now. And is a, again, now he's starting to have an influence in this game as well, Jeff. Certainly is. And Lern Gales will have an influence in the league final, that's for sure. And a lot of people are po talking about them as dark horses for a good championship run as well but that's a discussion for another day as Brian Mullen takes possession of, of the football 27 minutes played here in the opening half it's flowing by speaking of flying by look at uh, uh, Alton Kellum flying by the Innes Gillen Gales defence but brings it into the corner on this occasion has support there from the hard working Tommy McCaffrey Leaves, lays it out to Hoshin Kellum Kellum has Mullen with him Mullen gathers it not the best ball in the world but Kellum might pick up the paces ball goes to ground well defended on this occasion I think that was Johnny Casti is it over there yeah high challenge on Casti and Casti gets the free to Innes Gillen Gales that everybody behind the ball bar two players and now a couple of uh, Erin Gales players sprint back to shore up their defensive uh, areas the results start to come through the halftime results we will be with us very soon and we'll discuss them we'll have no halftime break this evening as Timor lead Balcou 1-4-3 Maguire's Bridge lead uh, Newton Butler the ball is in the hands of uh, Horn good ball inside but I think it did it take a deflection, take a deflection yeah, the defender yeah. got a hand on it and it's a good job he did because that ball was going straight oh. into that ball was heading straight, I think it was, to, was it to Connor Love in there, and, yeah. and it looked as if it, if it had made through him, it was, it was goal on. One of the Aaron Gales players go, goes down, needs a little bit of attention, but the looks of things, we'll follow that in a minute. I think it might be Martin Gilfeather. He's got back to his feet very quickly, now he's got the ball in his hands. It is indeed Martin Gilfeather. He's struggling a little bit, but he lays the ball off on this occasion to Paul Ward, and it over goes the far side to Ryan Lyons. Lyons in possession. Aaron Gales lead two goals and three to one three. Ball in the hands now. Gregory McLone, McLone in the middle of the feed, locks up, surrounded by four in the skill and Gales players. Lucky to get out of that one. Back it goes to Jack McCann, McCann to Paul Ward. Ward switches the play over the far side, over onto the terrace. A few souls over there on the terrace enjoying the late evening sunshine here. August sunshine in Brewster Park. Ball in the hands of Martin Gilfeather. Gilfeather to Alton Callum. Callum. 45 metres out, still Callum looking for space, gliding through this Brewster Park. What a ball to McCaffrey, what an effort, what a save. The chance is still there, ball tapped over the bar. What a move, what a save and what a finish at the end. Unbelievable football, the pace and power of Alton Callum. Well, is ridiculous, it's the yeah, only word. Absolutely incredible and he had Johnny Cassidy and Brandon Horn converging on him and had the wherewithal to slip a brilliant pass to the oncoming Tommy McCaffrey, who it has to be said, timed his run to perfection <laughs> and was met then with a brilliant save by Kane Newman. Um, and the, the rebound from the save then was, was, was tapped over then by, by Dan McCann. A brilliant, a brilliant move. Yeah, and Kean Newman, well, he, he, I, well, I'll give him credit. He was in the right place, but I think he took it on the side of the head, to be fair well, to him. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it hits you as long as you're in the road of it. Yeah. Well, break ball picked up again. We hope, we, we, we know we're approaching half time, but we really don't want half time. This is so good, so enjoyable. Hagen Callum, can he finish? The answer is yes, by the looks of things. In it goes. Oh, it's gone to the left and gone wide, but. This is super, super football. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Egon Kelm showed a fair turn of pace there mm. as well the first time this evening. Um, he has been playing well in, in fits and starts, but he uh, he showed the Enniskillen defence a clean pair of heels there and probably should have nailed that one, Jack. Yeah, break ball won on that occasion. The full press there by Aaron Gales. There's no way that Cian Newman's going to be able to work a short, so he's going to have to go long, and, and Aaron Gales know that. They are primed and ready for this ball out in the centre of the field. Up the go again, this is 50-50 again. Up the go, break ball, who wins it? It's won by Innes Gillen Gales and Aaron Nolan. Gives it back to Josh Horn. Innes Gillen could do what a score before half time. Ball fed down there towards the Eaton Barrett for the man who got the opening goal of this game. We've had two more subsequently as the ball is in the hands of Barrisford. Barrisford lays it back. Ball in the hands now of Josh Horn. Horn. Well, the referee has called for half time. We've played exactly 31 minutes or just a, a few seconds over it. What a wonderful half of football, Mark Henry. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant half of football. Um, both teams going at it, uh, Jet Hammer and Tongs. Both teams, look, the intent was clear from day one that both teams wanted to win this. 
Um, the Gales pushing Johnny up onto to Alton Kelm, a clear demonstration of their intent in, in, in trying to close down the, the threats from Aaron Gales. Um, they've had mixed success with that because Alton Kelm has been successful and a threat from time to time. Uh, mind you, so has Johnny Cassidy for, for Enna Skillen. But both teams have played both teams have played some absolutely brilliant football and we've been we've been treated to an exhibition of kick passing. Uh, from both teams, Brandon Horn, maybe particularly in the Enniskill and Game, Gales team, Ryan Lyons on the, the Balik team. Um, There's the opportunity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And oh, it hit Keane on the forehead. I'm nearly sure, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. But as you say, yeah, he, look, he got, his, he got himself in the way. Yeah. Um, and look, as the, 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 the say, we've been treated to, to some brilliant kick passing. We've been treated to some incredible pace um, in, in terms of the moves. And also, and we've been treated to, to some brilliant inside forward play as well, um, Jet. Like that, if you like, old fashioned corner forward trickery from Connor Love and from Tommy McCaffrey. Tommy McCaffrey has been exceptional. He has been absolutely exceptional. Now, I would have to say that, that Connor Love's influence has waned since yeah. Colm Keown has moved over yeah. on to him, um, so that has had a, a, an impact, um, a, a positive impact for, for Ern Gales. Um, so it's important that Ennis Gillen get Connor Love back into the game again. And are you surprised, uh, Mark, that uh, both sides are so open they've tried to adjust but is it because there's so much pace in the, in the teams and some of the kick passing is so good that they haven't time they're not playing out and out sweepers by the looks of things but they're trying to drop no. players back to fill they but are. they're not there quick enough is no that, they're is not that there fair? they're not there quick enough i think i think Aaron gales have been a little bit more conservative than than, than Anna skillen they seem to leave one or two back all the time but when Ennis Gillen attack, they all go. And if it does break down, they are exposed at the back. And that has been that has been shown from time to time. So uh, both teams are probably playing more open than we're used to seeing. Um, yet. Now, it's making for a brilliant mm -hmm. spectacle. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe some of the modern coaches, if Rory Gallagher was here, for example, he'd be, he'd be going clean mad along the sideline there watching that. But uh, it's, it's great for us, the viewer. And there is an element of what you said earlier on. Because the, 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 the ball has been moved so quickly through the hands, and the quality of the kick passing is so good, it's kind of making sure that it's making, it's creating a situation where the ball gets inside before defenders get back. Ah, yeah. So if you were a manager for both sides, would you deploy a, an out and out sweeper? Uh, yes, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I would well, take even in an Iskill yeah, situation yeah, no. where they're three points down, they need to win the game. Would you go with a sweep? I would uh, in the in the initial stages of the of the second half. Yes, I would because they cannot afford Aaron Gales to get another goal. Yeah. Because if Aaron Gales get another goal in the the first ten or fifteen minutes of the second half, it's game over. So I would I would I would play a sweeper and I would play the sweeper nearly on the toes of Tommy McCaffrey, um, not not covering all of the defence. Mm -hmm. Literally, okay. double mark and Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Um, in front of him. Yeah, yeah, but I would also, you know, we talked about Ryan Lyons and Josh Horn. Both of those guys want to play ball. You know, you'd nearly be asking the question, could could Ennis Gillen put somebody on Ryan Lyons to close down the supply into Tommy? Yeah, man, 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 man mark, mark him. him. And yeah. let Josh get on with his game. So don't drop uh, off him. Maybe, uh, I think they're dropping off Ryan too much. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's, it's Josh's natural game to try and read and pick up um, and, and nearly play as a, a traditional centre half back and, and look to build play. So perhaps maybe um, Ennis Gillen could look to see is there somebody they could put on Ryan Lyons to free up uh, Josh and, and close down the supply that the, the, the absolutely brilliant ball that Ryan Lyons is putting into Tommy McCaffrey. And in terms of creativity, because that's what Ennis Gillen will need in the second half, where do you maybe see that coming from? Well, look, I think they're going to have to, you know, the, the, the avenue to Connor Love has been closed down a little bit. I think Ennis Gillen are going to have to get a little bit more coming from deep, coming from their half-back line. And I suppose, look, it's all very well putting Johnny Cassidy on Alton Kelm, but then you miss that coming from deep. Mm -hmm. He's not bringing that coming from deep. So they're, they're, they're Ennis Gillen are going to have to get that from somewhere. That, and they're going to have to get their running game going. They're going to have to get Brandon Ritchie. They're going to have to get Conor McShay. Um, and as I say, they're going to have to get maybe Kieran Smith and Aaron Nolan come from the half-back line to create overlaps and play it through the hands to, to mix it up a wee bit. Um, to try and create openings because, as I say, their inside line has now been closed down with the switch of, of Colm Keown um, on to um, Connor Love and uh, Paul Ward has now settled into his new man as well. So um, Ennis Gill are going to have to try and I say mix it up and try and run it a bit more rather than try to look to kick it. Yeah, and was that's where John Real, who's been having an exception year for the Gales, is a huge loss and indeed Owen Bacon because that would provide further options. Look, absolutely. Owen Bacon would provide a scoring threat from beyond the 45 metre line so they wouldn't have to always work the ball in close to goal. Also, the point you make about John Real, 
Um, if they had John Rehill in there, it would take a little bit of the pressure off Connor Love. And also, John can win one that doesn't come in perfectly as well. You can launch one into John. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so look at we are at half half time and we are going to uh, have an opportunity now to review what the situation is when Division One football. All I know is that Devonish are leading by a goal at half time. But the man who has all the information in relation to Division One and can tell us what impact that will have on uh, Division One uh, at half time is Gareth Caldwell. So Gareth. Tell us the, the state of play and the, and the lie of the land, like good man. Well, we'll just run through the, the half time scores as they are in Division 1. Russ, Russ Lee, 8 points, Derek only 6. Devnish 1 5. Benelec 5. St Pat's 2 5. Edderney 6 points. Inniskillen 1 3. Erngales 2 4. And Derlin 3 points. Canale 2 4. So, state of play then in Division 1 would mean that at the top end it'll be Ern Gales and Canale currently occupy the top two places that'll be them through through to the final and at the bottom all three teams who are currently in the bottom three places are all winning some, uh, some pa so it would mean it would be as you are coming into it that Devnish and Rosley would be the two teams relegated with some Pat surviving so as uh, things stand uh, give me the Rosley result I just did Rosley are leading 8-6 Slayer leading. And All Devish three teams leading. at the bottom at the uh, are leading. What are what are Dona leading by? Two five to six. Two five to six. So they are in a, in a, in if, a good place. Uh, the way it is, if Dona win, it doesn't matter about the other two results. The bottom teams don't yeah. stay up. Yeah, yeah. So it's looking promising uh, for for Dona, but it's two, I suppose, of the big clubs. It's fair to say in Fermanagh football over the years with so many championships uh, over the last. Um, 20, 30 years, Devnish and uh, Rosley, it's looking very likely that they're going to drop out of Division 1 tonight. Well, as it stands, that that's that's the, the state of play, Jet. Um, as you say, it's two big clubs to, to fall into Division 2, if that if that's what it is to be. But, you know, we're, we're looking at a league over the course of nine games, and you are where you are come the end of them then. Yeah, so that's the revised table there, as, as things stand, from what, from what I gather. Um, so, uh, at the top half... Are, are the top two positions so it's it's quite simple that uh, I, I take it I, I didn't hear the results or the scores but I take it Derry Lynn or sorry um, Canole Can, Canole are leading two four to three points all ah, right so they're in a very so strong, the, strong, they're strong place. you know as it stands it would be Ern Gales and Canole going through to the final as we've seen here Ern Gales are are having the better things here in Brewster Park as it's well a terrific game by the way Gareth yeah, and it's, it's been very open, you know, there's yeah. been plenty of goal chances, um, probably a bit too open for as far as yeah, in a yeah. skill are concerned. Yeah. And some brilliant in, uh, individual performance as well out there. Yeah. Um, so, um, th that'll, be, that'll be disappointing for, for in a skill uh, because they have had a good season up to this, that defeat down in, in Garrison, I suppose, maybe. That's probably the one, the one that, that, if you're looking back and they don't make the final, that'll be the one that they look to. Yeah, yeah. And um, the middle section of the table, then I suppose it's all about places. Then, uh, well, obviously it's it's not just your league place, and now we're looking yeah. at championship seeding as well, and the two groups that that'll contest the season senior championships, um, and we'll find out the, the bulk of it tonight. Yeah, and the reason why we won't find out at all is because the, of the league finals. Well, the, the league finals. the league finals. So, oh, sorry, league seed finals. one and two seeds will will come out. The winner of the league will be seeded one. And the runner-up will be seeded too. Right. So Aaron Gales could top. Will if they win here tonight, they will top. Uh, but might necessarily be number one seed. Canale, and then Canale win that league final. Then the situation is that Canale will be the top seed. Is that, is that, that correct? Yes. The the league winners will get top seed, no matter if they f even if they finish in second place. The league winners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So still a there's still a you know there's a long way to go yet. There's another 30 minutes of football and. But it, it looks at the minute, you know, uh, you'd have to fail for Rosley and, and Devnish because they're both doing what they have to do tonight, which is winning. But so are some Pats. But then, as you as you said, uh, it's based over nine 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 games, and and, that, and that's it. You know, you have and to. And probably well, for some Pats's case, there, the fact that they came in with with a point, I think, out of the club players. Yeah. Competition has, you know, that might ultimately keep them up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, interesting. So that's Division 1 covered. Can we maybe have a look now? Kieran uh, Maguire is with us here this evening as well. And uh, we have the scores, first of all, have we? And then uh, the, the the table, uh, I think what's up on your screen at the minute maybe is as, as things stand. So, uh, Kieran, over, over yeah. to yourself well, with the information. The, the most critical score line in this game, Chair, is that... Belcou are beating Timor 2-4 to 4 points which means Belcou would be leap Timor come into tonight in second place so uh, Belcou would be leapfrogging Timor and would be in third place but Lisniski are also winning so it's Who Lisniski beating? Li Lisniski are beating Tampo 5 points to 2 so 3 points between low that score. there it's low scoring yeah but it's also quite close yeah, so yeah. maybe unlike Division 1 where you can see St. Pat's ahead in that game in both of those ones Timor could still come back in that it's 2-4 two, two, four to 1-4 so there's only a goal between them yeah. um, and Timor had led for most of that half Timor right? had led for yeah. it yeah I think there might have been a drop in the 3G because when it, when it came in at half time Belcou had got two goals right. uh, 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 according to what we have other than that uh, Newtown Butler are, are having they're playing D d they're playing uh, Newtown Butler are playing against Bridge. Uh, I think I seen coming Newtown, yeah, four four was the score. There's the last Adam score line that I had. Yeah, no, um, Adam C's playing Co. And the half time score line is Adam C two nine Co. Seven points. But the game between Maguire's Bridge and Newtown is four four to eight points. So that's getting the award for the highest scoring game so far. But uh, just to correct the the, ha the half time score between Timor and Belcou is Belcou two four and Timor won four, so it's uh, one, uh, well, a goal well, between a it. Huge, uh, that has a huge impact on the division because Timor yeah. came in this evening knowing that a win or a draw would have got them uh, promotion. They're a goal down, and therefore the benefit uh, is accruing to the men from Liston Ski. Yeah, Liston Ski are, pro are, are profiting on Timor's misery at the minute, but as we did say, there's only a goal between it, so uh, only a goal between them, so Belcou would have the op your uh, Timor could if they can get it back in the second half it it's still in their hands yeah well, it, it's still in their hands very busy in the second half because the Fli real drama didn't even know now. there was a game going on here well <laughs> the, there certainly is a game and it is some game and i'll return back to uh the the commentary <laughs> position and join uh mark again so uh some really interesting information coming through there uh mark it looks like uh, the demise of uh, devonish and rosley will probably be confirmed this evening but in division two it's really really interesting in that timora trailing balcou by a goal and with listen ski winning that puts them into second spot in the table so interesting uh evening so far yeah interesting evening and, and those two games in division two are very close so again as we said earlier we would expect that situation maybe to change a time or two in the next half hour um yet yeah um, Really, really exciting evening uh, here on Bonham Brothers for Manage ATV. Um, we're underway for the second half, and the ball is caught in the middle of the field by Brandon Horn. They will know the situation. Well, they do know the situation even before the game. They, in a skill and games, knew they had to win this game, and that has not changed. Kenali are doing their bit. They are leading, and therefore they look at the moment to be favourites to make the league final and your former teaching colleague Dom Corrigan will be a, a happy man if that's the situation. Oh he will indeed, he'll be delighted with that and, and you, I know I was chatting to Dom during the week and he would have been keen to make the league final, he, he sees it as an important part of maybe developing this Canoli team so as things stand he's, he's in the box seat. Well, the ball fed down now, picked up bounces favourably for Michael O. McGarrigan. McGarrigan striding forward again, not the best solo on the wall. Bertie O'Callaghan does all he can to nick the ball away. Comes to Alton Callum. Callum pu pulls at it first time. It goes to the left hand side and gone wide, but no sweeper there for Inneskill no, again. No sweeper again. And look, uh, Alton snatched at that. The fist pass, I suppose, if it had been a bit more crisp and straight to Alton's hand, he'd have got the shot away quicker and probably would have got a point there, but uh, he ended up kicking under pressure and snatching at it. Yeah. So, um, well, kick out there from uh, the Keen Newman, not the best kick in the world. Brian Mullen gathers possession, back it goes inside to Ryan Lyons, onto the right foot, not his preferred uh, left foot, of course, and he kicks this one wide, two yeah, wides in a row. That's a disappointing wide for Ryan because whilst he's predominantly left footed, he can certainly strike scores with the right foot as well. And look, he was he was fairly close to goal, so he'll be disappointed with that one. Um, that's two opportunities uh, in quick succession for Aaron Gales um, and they really should have got something out of those. 
Yeah, two two wides in the space of the opening two minutes. Matthew Dixon is on the field of play, and Neil McDermott is the man that uh, com comes off. But Ern er Gales are dominating in a skill and kick out, and the ball diagonal ball on this occasion. Looking for Tommy McCaffrey. We haven't had a mark in the game so far. That's not going to be a mark either, as the ball trickles over the sideline, and that will result in a line ball for in a skill and Gales. Matthew Dixon on for Neil McDermott. What will Matthew bring to this in the Skill and Gales team? Matthew will bring a wee bit of spark, um, another bit of pace, and he, he has a goal in him too, uh, Jet. He can score. Um, he, he's lively. He will certainly now he will certainly add another option inside if they can get the ball kicked in. Josh Horn in possession of the football. A little bit of dew coming out of the ground and therefore uh, Horn slipped and went to ground. Gets back up quickly. Gives it to Aaron Nolan. Nolan in possession, 45 metres out, lays it off to Johnny Casty, Casty to his county colleague, that's Richie O'Callaghan, O'Callaghan, 45 metres out, Aaron Gales of every bar, one player behind the ball, every behind the 45, making it very difficult for Inniskillen to penetrate, but if one man can penetrate with pace, it's maybe Johnny Casty, lays it off to Josh Horn, Horn finds a little bit of po a wee pocket there, slips it inside to Dixon, back to Horn, Horn back inside, back it goes to Brandon, Brandon onto the right foot, bit like Ryan Lyons, uh, not his preferred sh uh, shooting foot back inside there. Ball is still in play. Opportunity for Connor Love. Love likes the look of that one. Over the bar it goes. That's a fine effort for Connor Love because he had very little time, very little ba back lift, and he popped it over the bar. Fine score. Yeah, look, they did well to get a score out of that after uh, Brandon miscued the with the right foot there. Jack Tierney actually did very well to win possession in there, Jet, and got it out to Connor Love, and he shot up very, very quickly off the left foot before the block came in. Change on the Erin Gales team sees uh, Colum Keown coming off the field of play. He looks in a little spot of bother and he has been replaced by uh, Ross O'Connor wearing number 28. Yeah, it must be maybe a bit of an injury with Colum there because he had done quite well when he had moved on to, to Connor Love, so they'll be disappointed to lose Colum. Yeah, um, so kick out now for Brian Ryder. <coughs> Ryder over the far side of the field. Brother, of course, of the manager, Seamus. Ball won on that occasion. Connor Watson gives it inside. Back inside it goes again. Another opportunity this time for Colin Quinn. Quinn from distance. Can it be kept in play by Kieran Smith? Kieran Smith doesn't keep it in play. It goes to the left hand side and goes wide. I think actually uh you 28 to come on for, for Aaron Gales there is, is Shane Mimna. All right, OK, uh, so... Who, who, look, again, Shane's a good man, Mark, and uh, defender. Um, probably will be able to do a job uh, in there on Connor Love uh, uh, as well as Calm Kill. Uh, Shane was listed in the programme as number... Pullback, no! Pullback! Referee explains the, the pullback. 2-4 to 1-4 in favour of Balcou. 4-4 to 8 in favour of Maguire's Bridge against Newton Butler. Adam C beating Cole 1-7 to 6. Tempo 5 2 down to Listen Ski. That's a big, big score for Listen Ski as the ball is fed inside there. Picked up by Tommy McCaffrey. McCaffrey 20 metres out. Lays it back there now to Jack McCann. McCann from distance. Fancies his chances from distance. Wonderful effort from Jack McCann. He certainly has that in his locker. He's wearing number six or number four on his shirt, but he's certainly not a number four. No, no, no. Look, um, actually, Jack. Jack McCann can play anywhere, yeah. um, Jet. Um, a very, very versatile player and a, a good right foot on him. And again, Tommy McCaffrey uh, out in front, won the ball, um, laid it off. A uh, good score by McCann. And there's uh, Alton, Alton Kellum coming off. Yeah, Alton Kellum running a little bit gingerly as well, I would suggest, coming off the field of play and coming on there. Um, we we'll pick up who the sub was in a moment, uh, number 27 is uh, in the programme, it's Cormac Daly, but we'll we'll have to uh, pick that up and see who, it's Oren Johnson we're being told, so 27 is Oren Johnson, uh, commentator's nightmare this mark, but anyway, is that Love with that shot there? That's a fine effort again, is that Connor Love? That's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant score by Connor Love. Score. He's playing um, some stuff this evening. Yeah, look, and he started the second half really, really well. He pretty much had his back to goal there, Jet, and, and hooked that over his, his, his right shoulder with the left foot. Um, fabulous score um, under pressure there. 
Yeah, super score. So Oren Johnson's wearing 27, and Shane Mimna is wearing 28, and both of them are on the field of play for the men from Ern Gales, and they lead this game 2-5 to 1-5. We've played six minutes in the second half. Ball on the ground over there. The referee indicates there was a tug on the jersey. Just a score between one goal between the teams. Yeah, nothing no, in it. No, absolutely nothing in this game now. And this was the next ten minutes will be absolutely crucial. Certainly will. Ball in the hands now of Ryan Lyons. Back it goes to McGarrigal. McGarrigal's sliding through the centre. Bit of space for him to operate. A good ball down again. McCaffrey, very unfortunate, didn't gather the first time, but going in there, looking to pick it up was Dan McCann. Ball given well, retrieved just in time by Aaron Nolan. A little tussle on the ground there, and the referee indicates that that's a free out to In the Skillen and Johnny Cassidy will take it quickly in the Skillen Gales. No need to panic at this stage. Just a goal between the sides, but they need a, a win. Here tonight in the skill or Aaron Gales have won uh, eight out of eight games in the league. They'll want to make that the clean sweep and get the full maximum points. Ball fed in there and picked up by Ryan Lyons again. He was foraging for ball in the forward line a few moments ago. Great pass there. Looking for Brian Mullen. Mullen takes it well. Still Mullen striding forward. Great pace from Brian Mullen. Runs into Brandon Horn. Referee says nothing wrong with that. Jack McCann picks it up now for Aaron Gales. McCann looks for support. That support is provided there by Owen Johnson. Johnson lays it back to Ashin Callum. Callum 65 metres out from the Niskillen Gales goes. Good ball over into the space here on the stand to Dan McCann. McCann cuts inside, gives it back to Callum. Callum wearing seven on his back all over the field. Still Callum being held up there at the moment by Inniskillen Gales defender. On that occasion, it was Kieran Smith. Ball now back inside to Michael O'McGarrigal. McGarrigal in across to Brian Mullen. Mullen back to Aegon Callum. Callum in possession, coming forward. Little bit of space to operate in. Strides over the 45 metre line. Lays it over the far side of the field. Aaron Gales retained possession. Back it comes to Mullen. Mullen thought about it, then decided to lay it off one more time. Aaron Gales still in possession with Oshin Callum. Callum in the centre. Good ball inside by Callum. This is a brilliant move. Can McCaffrey finish? They might even do better. Oh, great block there. Brilliant block. Coming It was Dan McCann who had the shot. Well, Seamus Ryder is claiming for a foot block, but I don't think it was a no, foot block. No, I don't think so. And look, I think maybe uh, Tommy McCaffrey maybe had the opportunity to take a point mm. there as, as they were could see the goal on the main but the space was closing down very very quickly as the, the move developed so Tommy maybe would have been better um, in terms of, of maybe popping the ball over the bar yeah we got a wee chance to look at it there it was McCann it was a good block yeah, there a number of players converging yeah. on him at that stage yeah score coming in from Garson uh, as we speak and it's 110 to five points in favor of the men from Devonish there uh, well doing their part of the the bargain but mm -hmm. it may not be yeah, enough for them yeah looks look, like 40 years in division yeah. one's come to an end yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now obviously it, it was clear Devonish would not go down without a fight but obviously if some pats hold on up at, at home and Dona then uh, Devonish's efforts will all be in vain yeah, Timmy Boyd uh, coming on to the field of play. Timmy's just returned back from Canada, from what I gather. Yeah, and it'll just be interesting to see um, what sort of shape Timmy is in, in terms of his, his sharpness and so on, having been away for so long. Um, he certainly has he has a bit to offer if he's in good shape. just ball, tipped over the bar there by the goalkeeper. It was Ryan Lyons who at the 45, floated it in. Coming off, I think it's Ethan Beresford, is it? It's Ethan Beresford. Yeah, Ethan Beresford's gone off. Yeah. Fine 45 there from Ryan Lyons. Yeah, good strike from Ryan. Um, just eases it out to four points again, keeping Enniskill at arm's length. Yeah, 12-8 uh, with uh, 10 minutes played in the second half. Ball broke and won by Josh Horn. Now the ball is in the hands of Kieran Smith. Lays it back to Richie O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan ghosts round Dan McCann and strides forward. Need plenty from Richie, but he ran it into trouble. And uh, well, fortunate enough to retrieve possession on that occasion was Ryan uh, McDonald. Ball fed across now for Inniskill and Gales to come forward in the shape of Colin Quinn. Need scores at this juncture. 10 minutes, 11 minutes played in the second half. Ball in the hands of Conor McShea. Uh, Crossfield ball looking inside, but Ryan Lyons read the danger. He's all over the park. He's involved in everything good that uh, Aaron Gales are involved in. Yeah, and you know, from an attacking sense, he's been superb. 
but dropping back to very good effect there and has done all evening as well. Um, and look again, has the engine to get back mm -hmm. up the field again, Jet. He's been very, very impressive this evening. Well, he's in possession of the football again. He's in terrific shape, it has to be said. Coming forward, looking as if he's been fouled. Referee playing the advantage, hand went up. He's now blowing his whistle because Ryan Lyons uh, didn't accrue any advantage and the free will go the way of Ern Gales. Yeah, and it's sometimes the case um, when you have a free flow and open first half, space becomes a wee bit more of a premium in the second half, and we're finding that here um, scores are, are scoring opportunities even mm. are harder to come by. So um, teams are going to be having to maybe be a little bit more patient and be very, very good in their decision making. Yeah, two just four points in this uh, opening 12 minutes of the second half. Two wonderful scores from Connor Love and a, a score from a piece from Jack McCann and Ryan Lyons. That will please uh, the Aaron Gale supporters that are watching this game. And I know Gabby Ferguson is out and Santa Pons enjoying it. So too is Patrice Cox, married to a Devonish man, Niall Cox. He'll be enjoying the result coming from Garrison, but he won't be enjoying maybe what the eventual outcome will be as Connor Love goes for another score. That is ridiculous effort from Connor Love. Absolutely ridiculous effort from Connor Love. How that went over the bar from the angle he was at. Maybe we'll get a chance to see that one again. That's just an absolutely brilliant score from Connor Love and look only Connor Love could score that that's a, that's a typical <laughs> Connor Love score um, nobody else in the country as soon as he hit it he yes, knew absolutely. here we go let's get a look at this he's well inside the 20 metre line you know he's only about maybe 10 metres out yeah, and and he's, he, he's under severe pressure as is. well Jet but he got it up and over the block um, something that could be very significant as the evening wears on with Alton Kelm having come off and the have been able to put Johnny Cassidy back on Tommy McCaffrey now, if he can shut Tommy down over the course of the next 15 or 20 minutes, that could go a long way to, to, to drying up the scores for Aaron Gales. Well, with the way this man here is playing, he's, he's, he's dominating the game as Ryan Lyons. And he's, well, he's dictating the game, it has to be said. But look, at your, it's a fair point you make because Michael O'McGargill comes off the field of play as well. And he was having a, a fine game for Aaron Gales. Maybe there's knocks there and they're trying to avoid further, further injuries. Yeah, Michael Logue had, had really grown into the game the last 10 minutes of the first half, and he was very, very good in the first 10 minutes of this half as well, Jet. So it's just interesting to see what's going on there with Alton Kelm off, Michael Logue off, Colin Keown off. Um, just interesting not to, to know what's going on with, with in the mind of, of Seamus Ryder in terms of those changes. Yeah, and I mentioned Shane Rooney was the, the one of the players that was injured and not expected to be involved, carrying a bit of a hamstring problem, but I see him, uh, he was yeah. the man that came on, so that's interesting as Brian Mullen strides through, gives it in towards Rooney, loses the first challenge, goes for it again, battles hard for it, does Rooney, does well, coming out with will he be charged for, or, yeah, yeah. for over carrying? Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Now, he battled hard to win the ball back. But, uh, fair call. Referee Jared McLaughlin tonight from Edirne doing his job out there, and we can we have him mic'd up so we can hear what he's saying at various times. So we hope you're enjoying that uh, piece of uh, additional uh, entertainment tonight as the ball is in the hands there of Conor McShea. McShea feeds it off one more time. Johnny Cast the man straight through, but he's coming through the centre and Aaron Gales on a big black wall across the, the D there and they've turned it over. They're working so hard, Aaron Gales. They've ever been behind the ball at the minute, but here they go now breaking the numbers. Ball in the hands there of Owen Johnson. Owen Johnson goes to guard. No, there's no doubt Aaron Gales have been a little bit more effective at getting the bodies back, Jet, um, and getting pressure on and closing down space. Who's away? Well, the referee making no comment on that uh, challenge. He's happy enough. Facilitating maybe a uh, substitution. The average lead, 111 to 15, a goal for Ballon Um Maybe we'll get some other updates, or maybe they're on they're on the screen. Maybe coming through as as we speak. Ten, uh, Ern Gales or Derry Gonley leading now. Devonish leading. Uh, I see uh, some Pats still leading. Two five to six. We know the score on this one here. So Kinali, well they have that one sewn up. Two ten to four points. Two six to two five out in Balcou. What a thriller that is. Four eight to one ten in favour of Maguire's Bridge. Uh, Adam C leading against Coe as the ball is in the hands there of McLone. Does well, coming out with it. 
ball uh, is in now in the hands of Jack McCann, but this is good tackling by Ennis Gillen Gales. Great, great hunger, great desire from Ennis Gillen to turn that one over. 14, get back. Church. You're standing straight in front. I give you time to get back out of the way. You didn't. Yeah. Right, drop out a couple of yards to the six-yard line. The referee indicates that the ball had to be moved forward, and Connor Love will pop that one over the bar. I must do a tot as you make a comment on the amount of scores that Connor Love has got tonight. Yeah, he, he really has. He's blossomed now in the second half. Um, was very good early in the first half. But I have to say that was very, very clever by Richie O'Callaghan in terms of buying the 10 metres forward. Yeah. Um, John Rehill's not here to kick freeze from the left-hand side. Yeah. Uh, Richie drew that uh, 10 metre advantage and that missed it made it an easy one for Conor Love on the left foot. Brilliant take there by Brian Mullen. Conor Love has scored five points here tonight. But that was a brilliant take. And now Tommy McCaffrey has an opportunity. I would suggest he goes for his point, but he's not going to do that. Gives it to Rooney, gives it to McCaffrey. What would I know about points? The ball is in the back of the net. And that possibly will seal the deal. The twin threat inside of Rooney and McCaffrey combined to palm the ball into the back of the net by McCaffrey. Third goal of the evening. Second goal for Tommy McCaffrey. Aaron Gales, Aaron Dreamland. Yeah, and look, good. Uh, Johnny Cassidy come out. Got oh, there's the replay. Yeah, got caught. Yeah, look, it was it was brilliantly worked by by Aaron Gales, but Johnny came out and attacked the ball, and the bounce just beat him. Tommy read it a second before uh, uh, Johnny it bounced over Johnny's head, and Tommy, to be fair to him, made the right decision and executed the thing brilliantly. Yeah, and, and to be honest, if I was his manager I, and you were leading me three points, I would probably be screaming to put it over the bar. But that's what forwards do. That's why they're there. They have that instinct yeah, to know well, and, and when the killer uh, to go for the jugular. And it's very much in, in Tommy McCaffrey's nature to go for goal first, and if it's not on, then he'll maybe think about the point. Yeah, well, that was an excellently constructed goal. He's away again. He is indeed. So the game's become more and more open because Ennis Gillen have to press for victory. Ball gathered there by Shane Rooney. Well, fortunate handy, enough. Handy, yeah. Handy. yeah. Johnny Cassidy. Two right. hard push in the back. <laughs> Two hand push in the right, number five, walk away. Back. I'd say this ball's going to be brought forward. Yeah, now to be fair to Rooney, he got out in front and, and, and under serious pressure he held on to the kick pass into him from Tommy, um, but I think it was he was fortunate enough maybe to get the free on that occasion. Yeah. And now it's been brought forward 10 metres, which makes it very, very kickable for Ryan Lyons, the form he's in this evening. Uh, the form of Tommy McCaffrey, and we might get a chance to talk about this afterwards, but uh, it's been phenomenal. Oh look, he's just—he's given an absolute exhibition. His movement, his pace, and and by and large, his decision making as well. Mm. Um, Jet has been absolutely top there. He's and that may be one of the things that he would have been criticised yeah, in, in his younger yeah, years and his development years. But certainly this evening now, he couldn't be faulted. No. Um, and Ryan Lagan, Ryan Lyon strokes that one over the bar. I suppose that the challenge for Tommy is to to do it next week and the week after mm. and the week after. Um, but he's at an age now where he's mature and experienced, and, and that should be coming. Yeah, uh, much he must more be, he what, mid, late 20s? Yeah, Tommy now be late 20s at this stage. Yeah, yeah, so in the prime. Yeah. Tommy won Tommy won a, a, a McCrory Cup with St Michael's in, in 2012, so he'd have been 18 at that stage. So add 10 to that. Yeah. 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 So 28 years of age, so in his, in his prime, in his peak. As another change has been made, Aegon Callan, he had a brilliant first half, a little bit quieter in the second was, half. But yeah, yeah. Um, He's making his way off the field of play. Uh, making notes, didn't notice who came on, but we'll pick that up in a moment. Uh, ball goes to ground, and this game will probably peter out a little now because I think it's a it's too long a road back for for in a skill and gales. I would have thought with ten minutes to go, it Mark. Is, it's a long road back, and, and I think they'll be a little bit disappointed. Um, certainly in the second half, with with what they're getting from from Brandon and Richie in the middle of the field. Um, you know, they really would have needed those two lads to, to maybe step up a wee yeah. bit to drive the thing forward. Now, Richie's at it now, but 
Um, they Brand probably would have hoped for a little bit more from Richie and Brandon. Brandon, a good start to the game, but faded somewhat. Yeah, Brandon's been very quiet in the second half. Don't think I've mentioned him in, co in commentary as that ball has floated in, but it's gone to the yeah, left, and left hand side and gone wide. And Richie has been strangely quiet all through. Normally, mm. he's a massive, massive influence for, for Anna Skillen, whether it's in the middle of the field, with dropping back, or sometimes inside. Um, now, there's still time. There's still time if they can get a handle on it. Yeah, this is a seriously fit. An impressive Erin Gales performance. They're a fit team. Yeah. I haven't seen them all year, but we mightily impressed. And we speak of Brandon, he gathers possession, gives a good ball inside there to Connor Love. Love scored five points. Can he make it six? Gives it back inside to Horn. Brandon Horn. Horn being closed down. Back to Connor Love. Love with the right foot on this occasion. Off the upright, but that one has gone over the bar. Come off the post and in. So Connor Love's sixth point of the evening. Yeah, another very, very good uh, score by, by Connor Love. Um, and he's continuing to carry the fight to, to Aaron Gales. And look, as long as Anna Skillner are able to get the ball to Connor, um, he will pose a threat from, from, from points and from the, there's a real goal threat with Connor as well. Yeah, just uh, half, uh, 14 minutes left and St. Pat's lead. Three goals and eight points to Adderney's eight points. So well that, they that, are that home and like host. Deal, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so Devonish's efforts uh, uh, look as if they're going to be in V and Jet. Yeah, it's looking like a, a sad evening for uh, the men from from Garrison as they uh, make their departure out of senior football. As I say, the first time in 40 years, having won the league uh, eight times in those 40 years. As the ball is fed inside, an opportunity for another score for Inniskill and Gales. Aaron Gales. But never be behind the ball. Josh Horn is the man that's trying to create a little bit of space. Not sure why in a skill and Arden popping over a point yeah, at this stage. Yeah, you know? no, there are two or three opportunities yeah. there to, to pop over a point. Still loads of time. Um, they should have looked for a point in that occasion. Yeah. Um, Aaron Gales had, had the avenue to go, closed off, and, and have turned them over. Yeah, a point would have what brought back to four. Um, with ten minutes left or so, that's, you know. It would still have been yeah. very manageable at that. Yeah. But there's five in it now, and Oshin Callum is in possession for Ern Gales, playing in the all-black jersey tonight. Ball now in the hands of Dan McCann. McCann over to Brian Ryder. Ryder gives it out to Brian Mullen. A lot of oohs and ahs when Brian Ryder came out with that ball, but uh, he knew what he was doing, I think. As uh, far there on Richie O'Callaghan, on Brian Mullen. And, and, and you know, uh, Anna Skill had them rightly penned in there. Um, Richie should have tried to be a little bit more disciplined there and, and, and not give them the handy out. Yeah, I see Balcou are still Balcou are still defeating uh, Timor by a couple of points, so it depends on what's happening between this ski and Tampo as Ryan Lyons comes striding forward to try and find out what's happening in that game. Just to give you an update, as Tommy McCaffrey is in possession of the football for Aaron Gales, gives it back there to Ryan Lyons. Man of the match performance, I would suggest, from Ryan Lyons. Ball, well, Tommy McCaffrey might also be contesting for that. So too, Connor Love. Uh, Tommy McCaffrey in possession. <laughs> he is certainly super confident here tonight, twisting and turning and dummy soloing and whatever else he can do out there. Gives it back now towards uh, Brian Mullen, Mullen, looks up, experienced Brian Mullen, spreads the play over the far side there to Ward, Ward inside to Jack McCann, he's had a terrific second half for Aaron Gales, Ward, still or McCann, still in possession, gives it back to his county colleague, that's Oshin Callum, Callum, 65 metres out from goal, he'll be saying to his skill and Gales, come and get it if you want it, uh, it's 24 minutes played in the second half, and it's Aaron Gales leading this game by five points, they are being encouraged on the sideline by Seamus Ryder. He wants this, the clean sweep of uh, nine uh, wins in a row in league football in Fermanagh. Remember, they were just promoted to uh, senior football last year as intermediate champions. Ball in the hands of Brian Mullen. Mullen, Aaron Gales playing with great confidence into a man who's been very impressive throughout. That's Gregory McLone. McLone, fit, mobile, and uses the ball well. Gives it back inside there to, is it Alton O'Reilly? Yeah, it Alton is, yeah, was the man Alton. who came on then. Um, there a few moments ago, Ryan Lyons looks up, gives it to Tommy McCaffrey. Twin threat of McCaffrey and Lyons. Back it goes, right foot this time. I think he's pulled it to the left and pulled it wide. Indeed he has. Another wide for Aaron Gales, but that the, the, the held possession ah, for nearly look, two that, minutes that there. That was a brilliantly mature piece of play by Aaron Gales. Um, keeping possession and it's demoralising for Anna Skill and Gales having to chase the ball down like that. So uh, keeping an eye there, uh, Derry Lynn 
uh, five points, and uh, so that and Belcu winning, Canoli winning as Richie O'Callaghan comes forward. Richie kicks it with the left foot, and Richie kicks it over the bar. A brilliant score, a brilliant driving run by Richie. Um, broke a couple of tackles, was forced onto his weaker left foot, um, but managed to screw the ball over the bar. So um, we'll see if that can, can rally Anna Skillen. Well, that gets it back to the four that we yeah, talked about. Yeah. You know, you think about the opportunity they had previously and why the, the, the Anna Skillen didn't probably chip away at a few points. And, and see, you know, if you go down into the last couple of minutes of the game, you're trailing by one or two yeah. points, anything can Even happen. If there's only the one score in it, yeah. there's always that chance, Jed. Yeah. So trying to keep an eye on the screen to see what's happening in, in the other games as we keep an eye on Jack McCann coming forward for Ingeas. Look at the run alongside of Martin Gilfeather. Brilliant run by Gilfeather. He deserves a score for that sort of run. The ball is with Barry McCann. McCann kicks it high. It's like a Gary Owen. He goes for it again. Ball punched away. Ball breaks down now and picked up there by Jack Tierney, I think it is, on, that's on the field to play for in the Skilling Gales over the far side of the field. Back inside it goes to Josh Horn, terrible ball, and therefore it's intercepted by who else but Jack McCann. Back it goes to Brian Mullen. Mullen, we look at the watch, it says we've three and a half minutes plus injury time to play. Aaron Gales lead this game by four points, 1-9 to 3-7. They're in possession of the football over on the far side of the field. We're waiting on the maybe the list of ski score to see what's happening uh, with in that game to see are they the team that are going to be promoted along with Irvin Stiles. The ball is fed in long. Up the go for an opportunity in behind. Could there be a goal of the game? There is a goal of the game. What a finish. Is it Connor Love again? Connor Love. Right what a it. finish. So um. that puts the cat among the pigeons. What a goal. 1-6. Connor Love. Game on. Yeah, high ball in. Uh, looking for t uh, Timmy Boyd. Timmy went up and competed for the ball, dropped in behind. Connor Love was on it like an absolute flash. There we have the replay. the replay. Yeah. Yeah, he was on it like an, and he, he had the ball kicked before the defenders <laughs> knew what he was doing. <laughs> what a goal. Right what foot into the corner. Uh, Absolutely brilliant goal. Well, you know, Connor Love and Tommy McCaffrey. Well, there's been so many performances, but in terms of finishers here tonight, Tommy McCaffrey, Connor Love. Absolutely, absolutely superb. brilliant in terms of forward play. Yeah. In absolute and a joy to watch, yet it really yeah, has. Well, to talk about maybe that's the problem the Fermanagh football have is the lack of forwards. Well, if you're watching in here tonight, you'll, you'll have seen some wonderful forward play, but it has to be said, defences are pretty open, so that has to be borne in mind. So why are, where are we with this? 14 to 16. Can't take our eyes off this now. I thought it was over when there was six points up, but... The, you never know in football and Connor Love is a man on form this time with the left foot goes it's over, to the wall. It's, it's over the bar what a score Connor Love shooting the lights out here tonight one goal and seven just one point between the sides never seen the likes of it nothing else in his mind yet he was going out and he was taking that ball and he was having that shot and he knew he knew the minute it dropped in his boot that that ball was over the bar it was a fabulous fabulous score so I'm right in saying uh, in a skill and gales need to win the game and a draw is no good to them so where are we we're with a 210 is 16 3 7 is is that right well, draw. No, it's two nine. It's yeah. two. It's two nine. Has to be two nine. Or am I wrong? Yeah. Two nine. Yeah. Uh, four in it. And they got a goal and a point. So it is. One eight. Draw two eight. Right. Well, there's not much going on this evening. I'm. Uh, I need to check that. But we'll go with the scoreboard. So it's a draw game at this stage. Yeah. Well, there was four in it, and yeah. Yeah. And that's a goal and a point. So uh, this game is certainly in the melting pot now. Uh, three seven, three seven. Yeah, I know. I see where I've gone wrong now. To two two ten. So, um, and Ellen Skillen must win it. Is that right, Jeff? Ellen Skillen must no win it. it. Draws okay. no good. Yeah. So we're now into injury time. We don't have any indication of how much injury time will be played. That will be at the discretion of Jared McLaughlin, the man from Edirne in the middle of the field. What a pulsating game we've had here on Bonham Brothers from Anna GA TV as the score lines are still coming through on your screens. St. Pat's 3-8, Edirne 10 points in the skill and well we know that score here uh, it's coming up uh, Canale or home and host 
as uh, Aaron Gales come forward now in the shape there of Alton O'Reilly. O'Reilly takes him into trouble. But the ball goes to ground, picked up by Shane Rooney. Rooney lays it back there to Brian Mullen. These next two minutes will determine who is going to be in the league final. It's come down to the last two minutes of the last game of the league as Brian Mullen goes and what a What a score! The roof has been nearly taken off. Uh, the stand, the John Vesey stand here in, in a skillet because that's a most ridiculous score again from Brian Mullen. What a performer. Oh, look at that. this stage of the game, given the effort that Brian Mullen has put in yeah. all evening, and even that piece of play, the tackles he had to, to, to beat, uh, I'm surprised he was able to kick the ball at all. Never mind kick it over the bar like that, Jet. Well, there's been some ridiculous scores in this game, but that's as good as we've seen all night from Brian Mullen. Aaron Gales lose possession in the middle of the field. Little bit of nonsense there. Uh, the ball, Owen Johnson goes to ground, gets back up very quickly. One point between the sides. Uh, in a skill and Gales need two points to win the game. They're in possession of the football. Do the goal for points to the Lord, try to work a goal. Richie O'Callan is the man in possession of football, lays it off, opportunity, ball floated in, but it's gone to the left-hand side and gone wide. So we have played 61 minutes wherever you are in the world. We hope you're enjoying this. I know Gaby Ferguson will be sitting on the edge of his seat out in Santa Ponza. So too will Patrice Cox as we count down the seconds. Aaron Gales are guaranteed a league final place, but will it be Canale? Will it be in a Skill and Gales. The referee looks at his watch. I would say there's another minute or two to be played. There's Great kick out there. Play, Excellent kick out there from Brian Ryder. Found the hands of Dan McCann. McCann stood up to the challenge of Jack Turney and now goes to ground and will lead into what? Yeah, 10 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah, absolutely. They'll, they'll, they'll take as long as they possibly can over this. Um, try and get themselves set up, have an option for the free kick and hope to see the game out from here, Jet. Well, just uh, Derry Gonley are beaten, Ross Lea, Devonish are beaten, Balalek. Um, Dona, well, it's down to what is that? Uh, six points. We have the score for this game. Uh, Canali are 2 12 to 5. Uh, Belcu are still beating Timor. That's some uh, performance out there. Newton Butler getting beat by Maguire's Bridge. We'll follow the play now as the ball. Uh, St. Pat's 3-8, Ederney 1-11. Maybe it's not over there yet either. Ball now in the hands of the Aaron Gales man. That, of course, is Owen Johnson. Johnson does well. Brilliant play from Johnson. Can he finish? Retains possession, runs into the cul-de-sac. Ball is in his hands. The referee indicates he overcarried the ball. And now the uh, Aaron Gale, or the Innes Gillen Gales defender, Aaron Nolan. Well, it's only a league game, but they're on their feet here. They're, they're on their feet here it's, in it's, it's definitely the not stand. only a league game yet, well, that's true, for sure. True, true. Um, <laughs> uh, the league final place at stake here, and both these teams want to be there. Richie O'Callaghan go for it in a skill and gates, I suggest, need a goal at this juncture. They don't, the movement inside, I'm watching Connor Love, he's moving all over the place. He's been tracked inside there by, um, it is uh, Shane Mimna, but the ball is fed inside in the, to Connor McShea. McShea lays it back one more time. Great drama, great excitement here on from GA TV, coming to you live from Brewster Park in this Friday night finale of the of the division the Westville Division One League in it goes and it drops short and the referee calls for the ball it is all over here in in a skillen and it's the men from Aaron Gales Malik that can celebrate a victory a clean sweep in the Division One the Westville Hotel Division One League. They have came here and they have put up a terrific performance and they've won the match courtesy of that brilliant score from Brian Mullen. But credit has to go for the resilience shown by Innes Gillen Gales. But it wasn't enough on the night and I would suggest Ern Gales worthy winners. Yes, Ern Gales are, are worthy winners. Um, uh, you said it. Credit to Innes Gillen. You know, 10 minutes out, we were, we were saying the game was probably going to peter out. Um, Aaron Gales had, had went six ahead at that stage. Enniskillen didn't give it up, worked the way back into it. That brilliant goal by, by Connor Love really threw the cat amongst the pigeons, and we had an absolutely brilliant finale. Um, but look, Aaron Gales just about deserved it. Um, there were brilliant performers on both sides. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about Connor Love and, and Tommy McCaffrey, who were both outstanding. Um, but I have to say, the, the exhibition of all aspects of the game that Ryan Lyons gave mm. tonight was incredible he dropped back intelligently when that needed to be done he won kick outs when that needed to be done the quality of his ball in his decision making um, and his score taken 
all of all of those facets of the game were, were, were exhibited by by Ryan tonight. He he was absolutely fabulous. Um, amongst a whole lot of a whole host of players who played very very well. Jack tonight. McCann, second half, Brian Mullen, terrific. Yeah. Young McLone in the in the middle of the field, Ashin Callum, Tarlis. Uh, some terrific, terrific yeah, performances by Aaron Gills. I was, I have been, I haven't seen them since uh, last year's intermediate final against Devonish, but you know they have improved they tenfold have from that, that, that game. That, they've, that, they've been superb. That side's unrecognisable, yeah. and it's a, it's a lot of the same players yet. Yeah, they've been yeah. playing for Aaron Gills for a number yeah. of years now. But, but they're playing as a unit, they're playing as a team, they're, and they're superbly fit. They're, they're in great shape, very cohesive. Uh, the team is well set up, I have to say, as well. Mm. The players are playing in the right positions. Uh, but I think the big thing from an Aaron Gale's point of view is there seems to be a unity and a cohesiveness mm -hmm. and a team spirit about them. You can see them even here now yeah. in front of us. Um, that's a united group of players. That's a talented group of players. Yeah. They have a bit of power. They have pace. They have scorn uh, threat. Um, and and, bear and in there's mind a good blend, uh, Mark. Between and sorry for cutting yeah. across you there, but there's a good blend in, in the age profile as well. Absolutely. Look, look, they have a few experienced performers, like the likes of Brian Mullen. There, um, he's a fabulous footballer, always mm. has been, mm -hmm. and look, really experienced, a real leader on that team. Um, we've already spoken about Ryan Lyons, and then you know around that you have a lot of younger players with serious pace and serious football ability. Um, and you know over the course of the second half, don't forget Colum Keown come off. Alton Kiln come off, Michael Logue McGarrigle mm -hmm. come off, and they still saw that game out. Now, I suppose we'd have to we'd have to just mitigate in terms of the two rehills and, and Beacom not being playing for yeah. Askillen. That's that's a factor just to be considered, but uh, super game. Yeah, well, we'll we'll give you an update on uh, the scores that uh, have happened elsewhere tonight. But I'm hearing that uh, Dona have beat Ederney by a point, and therefore Devonish and Rossley are the two teams that are will be relegated from Division One uh, this evening. So. Uh, that is a big, big result coming in from, from Dona. A spirited fight back from the men from Ederney, but not enough at the end. And Dona have done enough to survive in Division 1. And the big news, I suppose, is the fact that Erin Gales, or Inniskillen Gales and Devonish will be relegated. Your initial thoughts on that, Mark? Well, look, Rosley, Rosley and, and Devonish, two traditional powerhouses of Fermanagh football. Um, you know, it just shows how things just shows how things can change over a period of time yet that you have Devonish and Rosley now relegated to Division Two. Um, even a couple of years ago you'd have thought that was just not possible. So look very, very disappointing for those two great clubs. And as I say, two two real traditional powerhouses of, of Fermanagh football. And I suppose both teams, both clubs will now have to, to look and reflect and, and start to build again. Yeah, five championships and six and eight league titles is what Devon has accumulated in those 40 years prior to the, the great team of the 60s. I suppose the championships uh, were won in uh, the late 80s and early 90s. And of course, the league titles mixed in there as well, 86, 87, 1993, 97. And then in latter years, 2008, 2010, and 2017, not that long ago. Not that long ago, was, wasn't it? They beat Ederney in the final yeah, of that one. Barry and, Marone's you know, point yeah, so later look, on. Only five years ago, that team was winning a league title. Yeah. Now, I suppose what I would say is the, the, the landscape in, in Fermanagh football has changed in that there are a lot more teams now in the last couple of years becoming really, really competitive. Yeah. You know, you have the likes of Belnilek, you have the likes of Aaron Gales, who are genuine competitors now, along with your Anaskill and Gales, your Derragong and, and so come on. To the fore. Canale have now come to the they, they, they have now come to the party as well. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have, uh, we've had a, a brilliant uh, league, we have a brilliant league final to look forward to, and we have a really, really competitive, interesting championship to look forward to. So as well. our league final mark is going to be Aaron Gales. We'll get all this confirmed in a moment, but it's going to be Aaron Gales and Canale. Tom Corrigan will be delighted. He'll be absolutely delighted. Um, absolutely delighted. Um, you know, knowing Dom as I do, he knows that a league final will be a great opportunity for that Canale team um, to develop and um, to learn a fair bit about themselves. Um, they will begin in, as every Corrigan team does, believing that they're going to win it, um, and he will have them set up to try and win the game. However, even if they don't win that game, that's a huge development stage for them heading into the championship. Um, so it's, it's one to really look forward to. Erngales will obviously be, be firm favourites for that, um, but... Uh, 
you count out that can only at your peril. Yeah, I'm just looking at the huddles down here. Very calm and relaxed down there, uh, Seamus Ryder, and is, is Kieran Smith, is it, the, yeah. the trainer of the team yeah. down there as well? Uh, very, very calm and relaxed. Funny, that's not two words I would have associated with Seamus when he was playing. No, at times. no, no, <laughs> and maybe with Kieran as well. <laughs> but, but I tell you, credit to those pair of boys because um, they have that uh, Ern Gale side um, in really, really good shape, and, and as I said earlier on, a real a real unity and as you can see the calmness they haven't lost the heads about this really calm uh, and sensible and uh, they're they're a team now really on the upset and what about over to our left we don't have our camera on it at the moment but over to our left we have the Innes Gillen Gales team in their huddle and Simon Bradley still talking to them is this a significant blow to them they got to the league final last year and lost it got to a championship final lost it haven't made the league final this year is this a big blow to them I don't think it's a, a very big blow. I, I, I feel they certainly would have liked to have been in the final. They'd have loved to go on and, and, and win a league final jet to kind of frank the progress that they have made over the last four or five years. Um, you know, we, we talk about a team coming and the Gales have been coming and the Skill and Gales have been coming, but they're going to have to arrive very, very soon. And getting to the league final and winning it would certainly have franked their progress up to now and given them confidence going into the championship. But I still don't think this defeat is, is a decisive defeat for them. Um, they were very resilient. The game was very competitive most of the way through. And they do have a number of key players to come back in who will make a difference. Yeah, so um, there's the table as it stands at the, at the moment. So, oh well, the, how the league table has, has finished. Um, Mark, your, your thoughts on that, Aaron Gales um, on 18, Canale on 16 uh, in the skin and gales just losing out by that one point i suppose to look at that game down in garrison that's that's a, that's the one that they will be yeah it's maybe not tonight they'll be sore about yeah they'll be sore about that one down in garrison yeah yeah the derry golly finishing fourth we'll come back to them in a moment we'll we'll, uh, we'll see how this pans out in terms of the the seedings as well remembering that it's one um one three four have it written somewhere. It's the league winners, isn't it? Um, yeah, the so league runners yeah, up yeah, one and two. Yeah. So, so one, four, five, and eight. So we'll know who's four, Derry Gonley. They'll be going in uh, to group one. Uh, Ballinalek will be in there as well. Uh, some. So it'll be the league final winners, so Derry Gonley, Ballinalek, and um, who's bottom then. But that depends on who comes up. So we'll not know that for, for the time being. Timor were beaten, so they'll be bottom. So they'll be. They'll so that will be Timor in that group as well. Timor. And then on the other side, so it'll be either Aaron Gales or Canale against uh, three will be in a skillin. And oh, it's just gone. The screen's gone. The screen's gone. Six and seven is uh, Ederne and, and Rosley. I would appear. If, if you don't mind me saying, to be uh, the section to be in, maybe. <laughs> so the league, the, the, league the, the losers, losers, of the losers of the yeah. league final, yeah, uh, will be the top team in that, along with Ennis Gillen, Ederney, and Rosley, yeah, um, and then the other one, Derry Gonley, Balnalec, and the winners of the league final. Balnalec, um, Derry Gonley, and say that Darren Gales is in there, for example. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's, a, that's <laughs> the, they call that the group of death. <laughs> that's definitely the group of death. No disrespect to Ennis Gillen yeah, because and there's Ederney. nothing handy in the other one either. No, no. Ah, you see, you've been a skill in Ederney and you have either Canale or Aaron Gale, so yeah, yeah maybe my first reaction wasn't. No, look, uh, th that's very, that very interesting. Yeah, the Derek Only Benelec group looks maybe slightly stronger, however, it, it pans out. But if Aaron Gale's go in there, I suppose. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. a. Yeah, yeah, then you'd have Canale and a skill in Ederney. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nothing handy in either of those. <laughs> no, I wouldn't like to be predicting. Uh, what what might happen uh, in, how that in, might in, unfold in, in, in that but i suppose for tonight uh the other the other sides would be worrying too much about that because there's a few if spots and maybes yeah no <laughs> i suppose you could argue you could argue the reward for winning the league would be aye. to get in with eric on the and like in that group but then aye, what would the mindset be on no, something no, like no, that no, you'd you want the silverware uh, absolutely yeah. no no you want to go and win the league yeah, you're um, going with confidence yeah. there's only there's only two competitions that you can win yeah. um, and you go after both of them so 
Make no mistake about it, both Canoli and, and Aaron Gales will go at it. Uh, that final hammer and tongs, both teams really keen to win it. Yeah, and uh, uh, regardless of championship groups. Yeah, Edirne came back tonight from what I gather, they came within a point of of, of St. Pat's, but they were six, seven points down yeah. at one stage. And look, I, I missed quite a few players. Missing quite a few players. I was at the, the Edirne Canoli game on Monday night, um, and I think it would be safe to say Edirne weren't that annoyed uh, at the defeat. There's no doubt that their focus is solely. Um, on championship and has been maybe for a week or two knowing that they were safe in the league. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, they were missing a number of players they were, uh, tonight. The Edirne were missing a number of players on Monday night. I expect that they weren't back tonight. The likes of Paul McCusker and Sean Cassidy didn't play the other night. Yeah. Um, and then Conor McGee came Connor off. Connor came off. Mark McCauley Mark came Mark off. Decky, Decky McCusker came off. Yeah. So, Marty, Marty come, come on. on. Marty yeah. come on. And, and look, uh, made an impact as well when he did come as he on, does. So, as he does, yeah. yeah. So, look, Edirne's a seasoned outfit. They're not going to be too worried about the league, um, and indeed, they're not going to be too worried about what championship group they're in either, because mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Edirne will believe they can beat any of the teams that they're going to come up against yeah. over the course of the championship. Yeah. Well, they've won a championship they have. two years ago, so... And that's who's, what they need is, they don't have a very deep panel. Yeah. What they need is to get Paul McCusker, Sean Cassidy... Sean Cassidy, guys, Sean's yeah. key. Now, Sean's um, a wee bit away, I think. Yeah. Um, but well, they would be hopeful that he would be he would certainly be back before the, the round robin stages of the championship would be over. Yeah, but the big talking point is that the possibility of Mark McCauley maybe heading to um to uh, away. I'd, I'd heard I'd heard yeah, that rumoured. So I don't yeah. know how true it is, but uh, certainly I've heard chat of that. Yeah. We can't we, we, we can't give you confirmation yet because the statisticians and the mathematicians are all uh, heavily uh, trying to work out what the situation is with division two. I'm led to believe Where where, uh, where are the mathematicians and statisticians? <laughs> I just see Phil Flanagan here the wire. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you can throw up a, a provisional table, lads, that we can talk about, so that we see who's in the uh, who's in this. Um, well, let me see. We'll bring our microphones down, Mark. See, can we come come down here a little? Um, where are we? What are we? Oh, sorry, right, right. I thought you put up that screen for me. So the our audience can't see this at the moment. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so bear with us, folks. We. So we're looking at here at Irvingstown are promoted. So based on tonight's results, uh, uh, Timor, did they beat? Timor, Balcou beat Timor. Right, OK. Yeah, so Balcou, Timor, and this and Ski. So how did, how did that come about, uh, guys? What were, what were the results? Uh, Timor, so Tempo and this and Ski drew. All right, OK. And Balcou beat beat Timor. Well, could beat Timor and the other game was a draw. So that means that there's a three-way tie um, on on three points. So now it comes down <laughs> to the head-to-head -to -head between the, the the teams. Isn't that right? Over over the year. So I, 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 I don't think we'll get confirmation on that one tonight, will we? Phil? Will, will, we, will we hang on? Well, right, we're, we've been asked to hang on. Right, they're going to try and, and get and that get, sorted out. Get, give them peace to, to, to sort it out. But um, so li either Lissinski, Timor, or Balcou have we'll, an opportunity. We'll be, we'll be promoted, we'll be promoted. Along with, along right. with Irvingstown. Right. So, can you remember any of them results? Can we're trying to speculate I here. Remember you, back you, I can't. Yeah. So the, you, the, 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 it's it comes the head into to heads the on on just the three teams. There's nothing else. That's my so understanding. So it comes down to Timor versus Lissinski. Well, Lissinski, Belcou, yeah, yeah. and Belcou, Timor as well. Then, because yeah. right? it's, so it's going to have to be across the three teams. So Belcou, Timor, well, uh, Belcou won that by um, a point tonight, or a couple of points. So let me see what 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 Twitter's saying. There's a Timor man ringing me, but I can't answer it because I'm on air. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so and he, he might have the answer to our uh, question, though. Uh, well, I could, I, I, I don't know if he has or not, but um, I, I'll, I'll remain professional and, and, and not answer it. We'll see what um, uh, it's looking like. What Belcou? Well, the initial thoughts are that it's that, that it's Belcou that are, are, yeah, are promoted. Yeah, it seems to be that's what we're getting and here, and that that is some achievement, to be fair. Massive, isn't it? Massive, and that was a massive game for them this evening yeah. to, to 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 secure promotion. 
in, in such a tight in such a tight contest. We've had some dramatic evening uh, as a Devonish man in between Belcou and Balik. Uh, <laughs> Devonish are relegated. Belcou are, pro are, are promoted. You're, you're, doing well, you're, you're doing well to keep a cheery disposition here, Jed. <laughs> after all that. <laughs> I pull out the plug, somebody said. <laughs> but look, at no, you have to give credit where credit's due. Balcu, that is absolutely true. We've talked about our Gales and how they deserved the plaudits here tonight. But that's a terrific achievement for, for Balcu. Yeah, no, it is indeed. And look, that, that Division 2 was a competitive league this mm -hmm. year as well. Um, now, Irvinstown have, have shown unbelievable form in the last mm -hmm. number of weeks, and they've played scintillating stuff. But in behind them... Um, it was a real dogfight between uh, Timor Belcou and, and Listen Ski to try and secure that other place. Um, and look, as you say, brilliant achievement by Belcou to, to have squeezed through tonight. Yeah, and the, again, I'm thinking of, of the team that Belcou have. I've seen them here last year in the Intermediate Championship against, against Devonish. Um, well, I, I played for long parts of that game, but again, they're a team that I, I believe have trained very hard and worked very hard th this season on the, their, their manager and They've got the results and they've got the reward here yeah, tonight. Yeah, look, they deserve a lot of credit because there's been huge change in that Belcou team over the last five years as well. Yeah. They've lost a lot of top, top players who played with them for a long, long time um, yet, and they have managed to blood over the last three, four, five years a number of young players who have settled into the team and become established and have, have worked their way into Division 1. So it is, it's, it's credit to the club, credit to the manager, and uh, the, the young players who have come into that team, settled in, become proper senior footballers, and they'll now get an opportunity to, to test themselves against the best in the county next year. Well, we, we always knew there we are, there we have the table, and um, thanks to Phil and Kieran for all the work. I, I don't know how they've done everything they've done tonight. They've kept this show, show on the road here tonight, and they've been able to do the, the maths and all in the background and keep the scores coming in. It's been a terrific effort, and we hope wherever you are in the world, you, you enjoyed what, what you've seen and heard here tonight. It's been uh, a first for Fermanagh GA TV, but it's been really, really exciting, and it's a really exciting night for for Irvinstown and for Belcoo, but huge disappointment, I would suggest, for Timor and uh, Listen Ski to be so near, but yet so far. Look, and, and both those teams have had really, really good seasons. It, uh, and to be squeezed out on the last mm. evening, um, just the way they have, is, is very, very disappointing for them. Um, you know, John Rehill went out to Listen Ski um, and took them over and put a real shape mm. on them, mm. now, it has to be said. Mm -hmm. And again, they were going really, really well. Um, and look, Timor, you know yourself, really really competitive whatever whatever day you go to play them and you beat them you've done a good day's work so that was a, as i said to you that was a tough division um and the two teams who have come out of it really deserve credit for coming out of it um as i say particularly belku having having come through that sticky one tonight um and to secure the the, the final promotion place there yeah, and there's there's the text messages in in now for uh, up belku and so on and so forth from uh, Martin McMahon is over there in in uh, Boston. Uh, he'll be a, a very happy man tonight. And uh, a few more coming in. Jesus, Jerry, you made us wait for that announcement. So <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't it wasn't my fault. It wasn't no, us made. It was Kieran and Phil made uh, us wait. We we weren't the we weren't the mathematicians, but uh, I'm sure. I, I, I'm, I'm sure it was worth the wait, I would have thought, Michael, so uh, you can go and celebrate that uh, that victory for, for Belcou. But, uh, you know, when we came here in here tonight, I suppose a lot of people looked at the run of form that Timo were on and they thought uh, Timo would win the game. But Belcou's a difficult place to go it and is, get points. Yeah, it is indeed a very difficult place to go and get points. And then when there's so much riding on it, um, yet Belcou were always going to give it their very best um, and look, just did enough, did enough to get through. Um, and look... They're there, and therefore they deserve to be there. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt yeah. about it. And as I said, it, it, it's great for that young side to have got out of Division 2, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do, and have the opportunity to continue their development now playing Division 1 football next year. Yeah, well, my, my head's uh, so sore at this juncture, so I'm not quite sure whether I could work out or try to work out the the group, uh, the intermediate championship, um, but I think Phil and Kieran are going to do some some work on they're that part because we we, we, can, we can't do they're going to do it now. We we can't do we can't do everything for them. <laughs> but uh, sure, we're so, so our, our backs are broke carrying them this evening, Jet. Yeah. Well, going back to uh, Division One, um, just a recap on that there. So it's uh, Canali and in a skill and uh, sorry Canali and Aaron Gales in the Division One League final, which will be next weekend. I'm led to believe, and so too will the Division 2 final, and that'll be between Irvinstown and Belcou, 
uh, both games here in Brewster Park, I understand, and both games live on Fermanagh GA TV next weekend. It'll be confirmed whether we're going out on Saturday or Sunday uh, later on. So two great finals to look forward to. Look, two two mouth watering ties. If if you look at both of the of the division uh, one and two finals, Irvine's time will obviously go into the the division two final as firm favourites. But again, a bit like Canoli in the division one final, you you would not write off Belcoo's chances at this stage. The confidence that they will bring into that having come through tonight and, and secured promotion, and it's one of those a league final. You've already secured promotion. You've nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good way for Belcoo to go into that game. Um, and again, two two teams that play a lot of free-flowing football. And as I say, Irvinstown have been absolutely brilliant and, and racked up some massive, massive scores over the course of, of the last number of weeks. And again, the, the Division 1 final is one to really, really look forward to. Um, again, you have Aaron Gales, who, who have played brilliantly all through. Nine out of nine um, will be very firm favourites. But if Canoli are close to full strength, and make no mistake about it, they will be set up. They'll be very, very highly motivated. Um, I have no doubt that next weekend, uh, both of those games will be a treat for, for those that are here watching it and those who watch it on the, the Fermanagh TV jet. Yeah, it is, it, it is when you reflect on, on Iron Gales and uh, where they've come from. You know, they were in Division 2 last year and got promoted by virtue of winning the Intermediate uh, Championship and to come into Division 1 and win 9 out of 9. Uh, it is a... It's it's mind boggling Look, the, the achievement to be fair to them. The turnaround in in Iron Gales in such a short space of time and look as as we noted earlier on, this is the same group of players, mm. by and large, that have been representing Iron Gales for, for the last two or three years. Um now there there's obviously Ryan Lyons was away in Australia for yeah. a while and he's back. Alton Kellum missed a lot of football through injury. Aegon coming um, into the team. Aegon coming into Young the team. So in the middle of the field. Yeah, like there's, there's a few additions there that yeah. have made a, a this season have made a very significant difference. Um, you know, if, if Tommy McCaffrey is going to continue to show that mm. form, um, he is going to be an absolute handful for, for anyone. Um, and like Shane Rooney showed up <laughs> very, very well when he yeah. came in there as well. So he's, look, he's th feisty. Th th he's feisty. Yeah. He, I'll tell you, we, we didn't see much of his shooting ability tonight. It just didn't happen in terms of, of, of opportunities for him. But he can score as well. Um, he, he's a real scoring threat, a good ball winner. Um, and be a really good foil for Tommy McCaffrey in there. So there we go. They, they didn't let it, they didn't let us down. So no, no. let's let's study this. So and this is going to be hugely interesting as well. So if Derry Lynn, Division One team, Balcou, who are going to be promoted, listen, Ski, <laughs> my God, and Maguire's Bridge, and then St Pat's, Dona, Irvinstown, Devonish, Tampo. Could be, uh, well, I don't know. No, uh, take your picture. Uh, uh, yeah. Th they were two very, very competitive groups. Um, you, know, you take that, that, that group B. Uh, St. Pat's and, and Devonish mm -hmm. played all their football this year in, in Division 1. Okay, Devonish happened to be, to be relegated, but again, just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. um, an Irvinstown team that have absolutely flown through the league and a Tempo team that will be disappointed with how they, the they, they they went about their business the this year. The one team that yeah. I've been surprised by this year, I yeah, have to say, you know, in if terms you, of the form. If you start to, to, to name mm. names of players in that mm -hmm. Temple team, they have exactly. a lot of quality, quality, quality players. Yeah. And look, a couple of weeks now to, to dust themselves down, focus on championship and prepare properly. Temple will be a, a match for any of those three teams in that group as well. So that's that's a, v a very, very tough group. Um, and that look, that top group is no different. Look, obviously, Belcoo and Liston Ski finished up on the same points in Division 2 mm -hmm. this year. Darlene, again, survived. First year in Division 1, yeah. managed to survive um, quite comfortably. Weren't in the weren't in the dogfight this yeah. evening at all. A group that are growing in confidence as yeah. well. And a year in Division 1 will be... Uh, securing the Division 1 status will be a huge mm. bonus to them. Absolutely. And, and the fact that they're a young team and developing, they'll fancy, the, they'll fancy their chances yeah, in, a in lot that of, group. A lot of, of very, very good young players surviving in Division 1 um, will have been a confidence booster for them. They have a wily old uh, fox in charge out there in, in Sean Donnelly, who has Sorry. nothing to learn, um, especially come championship. <laughs> and the other thing too, Maguire's Bridge, when they have everybody out and available, they're a threat as yeah. well. That's the biggest challenge that they seem yeah. to have. Maybe with the hurling and so on, mm -hmm. sometimes interferes with them in their leagues. But again, if they have their best 15 out and available, um, 
they yeah. can cause some 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 surprises there as well. Yeah, was it them that rattled in the goals tonight against? Um, was it uh, Newtown? Newtown. Yeah, yeah. So and again, Newtown had been going well recently uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we're going to have a quick look. I think a confirmation of the senior championship. From what I gather, if you, I, I think it'd be unfair for me. Uh, yeah, it would be unfair for me to put you in the spot and pick uh, two out of each of those groups, wouldn't it? Well, it wouldn't be the first time you've been unfair <laughs> with me, Jet. Don't you? <laughs> thrift, thrift three, oh, three, is it? Oh, sorry. It's three go through. Okay. Oh, that makes it easy for you. It does, I. So away you go there. <laughs> Group A. <laughs> On this one. The intermediate. Three go through. Three go through. Don't know how that works like, but I know. We'll, we'll find that out later. First two, the top two uh, go through to the semi finals. First two to the semi finals. Top, uh, top one in each group goes through the, the semi finals. Okay. Right, okay. Well, look, I'll uh, I'll throw it out there. Um, I think maybe on 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 back of promotion, Belcou could finish top of that group, with Derry Lynn and Listen to Ski finishing second and third. Yeah, I would have um, probably went for Derry Lynn then uh, Belcou and Listen to Ski. Yeah, I just think I, ju I just think so maybe depending on how the league final goes for Belcou, and um, that boost of promotion, and if they were to come out of the league final, if they were to happen yeah. to win that league final. It would give them serious momentum going into going into that group. Okay. Um, group B, um, <laughs> I would I would fancy. Now, I suppose a wee caveat with with Irvinstown. At this time of the year, sometimes when the soccer starts again, yeah. some of the Irvinstown players uh, will play both the Gaelic and the soccer, and that yeah. perhaps might interfere with 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 the momentum and form that they're showing. Um, hopefully, from their point of view, not. Um, you know, there, there's nothing that that's a really difficult one to 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 try and pick out three. Um, we'll be here all night if you don't yeah, call it. Yeah, well, look, I'll 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 go with I'll I'll go with Irvinstown to manage to get through anyway. Um, but I've got a feeling that Tempo will 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 find their way into the top three there, so at the expense of either Devonish or St Pat's. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad night to be a Devonish man, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think playing in Division One, I th I, I think Davenish will will be okay. Uh, they had a good victory tonight. I don't know what sort of a battle on side it was, but I think there's enough resilience in 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 Davenish teams over the years to to bounce back from a huge blow tonight to to see can they get immediately back into senior championship football by winning the intermediate championship. So I think Davenish will 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 uh, be okay. Probably the, the first game for Davenish in that is very important. It is. It they is. need to get a win. Yeah. Um, Team that misses out. I have a f I, I just think there's so much quality in tempo. Uh, it would be very hard for me to, to rule them out, but they've had a hugely disappointing league. And unless they're the team, unless they, well, change their change their the way that they're going, they may well be the team that that misses mm -hmm. out. But we'll we'll see. So no doubt, Jet will both be proved wrong. Oh no doubt, no doubt, and they'll be thrown back at us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so senior is coming up right so i think as we had scribbled down mark yeah league final winners uh derry gonley balanac and ross Lea. and then group b league final runners up canali Ederney, and timor and there's your dates for the for the games and um yeah okay so is it the same situation top top team and then uh the other two um uh, play off so you asking me? You asking me to call it again, Jim? Ah, well, it's very hard without the without yeah. knowing who's going to be in the top. Uh, you know, in well, the I suppose maybe as on on form, you would argue that this is a bit more straightforward, regardless of how the the league final yeah. um, finishes up. Yeah, I would expect, um, despite their 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 tradition and so on in championship, I would expect Rosley to struggle in that group regardless of who finishes or sorry whoever finishes or wins the, the league final I would expect Russell to struggle in that group um, relegation is a huge blow for them the same as Devonish mm. um, it could be difficult for them to recover in a couple of weeks and come back with a, a championship challenge so I think Russell will be the team that misses out there and I think in group B um, no, no no I'm being told what am I being told alright sorry sorry alright yeah I didn't even pick that up we that's all right, Phil. We'll 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 let you go. A slight a slight change. Can Ollie are in the league final, not not in the skill as 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 we know, but um, 
we'll get the group back up here in <coughs> in just a, a wee second and and have another another look at it. But I suppose maybe the question that uh, was going to be maybe a, a harder one, but it was only going to be one question. I wasn't going to ask you to pick out the the three in each group. Although I think I would agree with you, it's probably no disrespect to Timor and Ross Lee, uh, but on form this year, you would probably anticipate that they those would be the two teams that would yeah. maybe. Look, I, I think both of those teams will, will struggle in, in those groups. Um, at different times this year, um, the other six teams have shown real quality and form. And of course, the likes of Derek Only, maybe who didn't up until now show much form, have serious pedigree recently. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, it's very hard to see how Russ Lay or Timor in the other group uh, would displace one of the other three teams. Yeah. So that leaves six, and the six <coughs> that we all think have a terrific, uh, a very open championship, we we, we reckon, this year. Uh, the six being Canali, Balalek, Ederne, Inneskillen, Aaron Gales, and Derry Galway. Yeah. That's some championship. It's if a if a it boils down to them six, uh, yeah. it's probably unfair of us to write off... Um, Timor and, and McGuire's Bridge. Yeah, but again, if, if you go on on recent form yeah. and, and recent pedigree, you know, you're, you are looking at those six. Yeah. Um, so, and you, you suppose what, what's your thoughts on those? Well, look, six, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was my question, an eventual winner, because that's where I'm going. Look, <coughs> I would still say, um, regardless of their indifferent league form, Derek Only are the team to beat. Um, you know, it's not, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't put that much store on the on the the, the struggles they had um, maybe a month ago in in terms of the league they were missing an awful lot of players and and key players like you know Ryan and Connell Jones missed games and they had various players out for various mm -hmm. reasons over the course of that period of time and look it's only a few months ago they were in an Ulster Club final <laughs> you yeah, know um yeah. so if you were asking me who who are the team to beat Derek Only are the team to beat yeah uh, regardless of how the league and has do you panned but out do you, but do you think they'll win it? I do, yeah. Yeah, I still think they'll see it out. Yeah, and the and the dark horse, um, we seen Aaron Gales tonight, and we seen them in full flow, and but then championship football is different, and it's a big step up from intermediate to senior championship. Balalek with the the two Collins probably back, and a few others. Um, what what's your thoughts on the dark horses? Ederney well, have been there. Yeah, and look, make no mistake about it, Ederney will be a serious challenge for 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 anyone. But they must get all their players back. To mm. say they they don't maybe have the depth that that Derek Only have, um, or even that we maybe saw with Aaron Gales here tonight, or that we know that Enniskill and Gales have. They need to have everybody uh, back and firing if if they're going to find themselves progressing um, into semi final and, and potentially final. I was very impressed uh, when you and I did the first league game here, uh, Belnalek and Enniskill. Mm. I was very impressed impressed by Belnalek. Mm -hmm. And they had most of their players out and available that night. Um, Dara McGurn subsequently went to, to America, but obviously he'll be back for a championship. The two Collins are key. Mm -hmm. um, Shea, uh, uh, it's my understanding, will certainly be about. Not so he sure about, about Lee. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think Belenelec would need the two Collins um, to be about if they're going to, to, to threaten to win it. But they have there was an awful lot to like about them that night mm -hmm. here against Dennis Gillen. Um, and that was a really good game too. Um I wouldn't discount Anna Skillen either at this stage. Yeah, you have to remember tonight that we were without Paddy yeah. Real and, and John Real and, and Owen Bacon. 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 You know, three huge players. Yeah, massive, massive mm. players. So um, certainly wouldn't discount them. I, I feel that Derek Only are favourites, if, if you were asking me, as you have done, mm. who, who, who at this stage, without having seen them play championship this year, will, will win it. I would I would go out on a limb now and say, look, I still think Derek Only will, will go ahead and win it. But I do think there are unlike maybe the last couple of years where there was only one or two real threats to them, there are four or five, six real threats to them this year. And, you know, the round-robin format for the championship this year is going to throw up some absolutely brilliant games. And the other thing about that is when we get to quarterfinal or playoff time and semifinal, there'll be no secrets. Everybody will have seen every other yeah. team play a number of times, so there'll be no shocks when we get to that stage. So we've had a, a hugely interesting evening here on Fermanagh GA TV. It's been a first uh, for us. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, 
I, I, I think it went as well as we could have anticipated. Uh, we have nothing to do with the mathematicians and, and the, no, the production well, end of it, uh, uh, Mark. I, I think, to be fair to the, the boys, that, that it was uh, it was a big undertaking this evening, um, and I think they've done a, a, a great job um, in, in terms of, of providing the information for the viewers in terms of the updates of scores, and thankfully yeah. the technology held up as well. So I think credit to... to the, the everyone involved in, in making sure this production went out this evening. Yeah, no, full credit to our cameramen here tonight and then Kieran as well, Kieran McGuire and, and Gareth Caldwell who are collating all, all the scores but the man who made it all happen was, was Phil Flanagan and I know the amount of time and effort that Phil has put into this production tonight and he deserves absolutely uh, huge credit for for it. Very, very ambitious it has to be said. I don't th think there's another uh, county streaming uh, this sort of production uh, anywhere in Ireland. No, look at uh, I think it was a it was a huge undertaking this evening, and um, absolute credit to to Phil uh, in terms of, of leading it, and and I suppose it was his idea to go ahead and and, and let let's try and do something big, and and we've managed to do it, and so credit to Phil and everyone else who's involved. And it's funny when you're out of Fermanagh and even in the country in Dublin and so on, you run into to I run into past people from time to time. And they really love this service. Mm. It's the only way they can get to watch games and, and stay in tune with what's happening. And um, just during the summer there, I met a, a past pupil, Fergal Lennon from Enniskillen here down yeah. in, the, in the Bleeding Horse in Dublin right. uh, one night. Yeah. And yeah. he was just saying how much he and his friends down there in Dublin uh, enjoy this service. And so it's, it's great to be able to contribute and, and make it happen for those fellas. Yeah, and isn't, isn't it great that your past pupils are still speaking to you as well? Ah, uh, some <laughs> of them are. Some of them. But come here on a serious note, thanks to yourself, Mark. It's been a long evening from 7 o'clock when we, we were here earlier than that, but when we went on air shortly after 7, right through to whatever time it is now. Thank you for your immense contribution here tonight. It's been a really, really enjoyable yeah, game. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Jim. Yeah, and the game itself, I suppose, lent to that as well. Because Absolutely. It was, it was some terrific football in that. So the congratulations go out to all the team involved tonight. The congratulations go to Kenali and to Aaron Gales. The commiserations go to Devnish and Ross Lay. The congratulations also go to the men from Irvingstown and the men from Belcoo because they're the two teams promoted. So that's a wrap here on Fermanagh GA TV, wherever you are in the world. We really hope you enjoyed this broadcast and come back uh, next week because we will have live and comprehensive coverage of both league finals uh, here on Monon Brothers Fermanagh GA TV next weekend. So for now, from Mark and myself and the team out here in front, uh, thanks to you all for watching and until we chat again, slow and go foil. Monaghan Bros, your local Ford, Hyundai and Maxxis dealership. Proud kit sponsors of the Fermanagh men's and ladies football teams, Club Ernie brand partners and Fermanagh GEA kit van suppliers. For car sales, servicing, parts and body repairs, get in touch with our team. Are you interested in changing your vehicle? Explore your options today at www.monaghanbros.co.uk